Hello, internet friends, and welcome to episode number 205 of Final Boss TV. My name's Adam KK Bay. I'll be your host today, and as per usual, today is the Balance Druid discussion, which actually, apparently, it's it's supposed to be the, the Guardian Druid Arena, or the Meleeing Explosives show, something along those lines. The one that you take the Starfall off your bars, whatever you want to say about it. We'll get through all that and more today on the show, of course, but I would not be sitting in this seat talking to you on the internet if it wasn't for these lovely nerds and ladies that are supporting the show, the stream, and everything in between over on the show's Patreon page, the holiday season. Thank you very much to those that are out there. I am already at work filling out your holiday cards to get them sent to you if you're at the proper tier for that. Don't forget the Jaina and, of course, the newest Ajara wallpaper, and they'll be in his off one in the future. But thank you very much to those that are doing doing the things. If you are not aware, there is more of this show out there. You can find the links down below. Right here on Twitch or on YouTube, of course. And yeah, we're up to oh, almost at 70 extra podcasts. I looked at that today because it actually like updates this as I do the front page stuff, though. So thank you very much to those that are supporting what I do here. And then, of course, big shout out to my sponsors over, over at Corsair and Elgato. I am partnered up with them. The commands work in chat. It's the holiday time if you're looking for bits and bobs or pieces in part for your next build or your current one. I know I have a big one brewing here that I'll be building around the holiday time that I will be live streaming. You can watch me put all the things together. But those links are down below if you want to do that. If you want something more, more physical in your holiday plans this year. But today... I did this on purpose, where I made today's show only two guests. Normally, I'm like, let's let you know we can get three guests in here, but it's a lot more discussion because we need to have chat available because there's some some of you specs out there have a little bit of uh, community maiming, memeing, maymays behind you, and of course to start things off, Tettles is here. Hello, sir. Wait, what was that segue? <laughs> what are you trying to imply, Bay? Well, I mean, I don't know. Do you, uh, if I put you on camera here and just wait about three and a half seconds, what happens in chat? It's not me. It's Bora that's got all the memers in chat. Is it? Well, he's, he'll be on here in a second. You're, you're, you're trying to, you're stealing his thunder now. I see what's going on here. Shit, I'm not stealing anything. <laughs> you're not stealing anything? <laughs> but I thought you were a triple threat, Tettles. I, again, I am a triple threat, like I was talking about before the show. Mm. Guardian PvP or 2500, by the way. Oh my god. 3.5 KIO and gosh. cutting edge gamer. Triple oh threat, my babe. Gosh, the Starfall dream. Well, fine. I won't, I won't look meander here any longer. Bora, welcome to the show as well. Yo, how's it going? Bora Bank here. Now, you gave me this picture after I asked for yeah. a couple more screenshots. So I think this is. You're obviously the boomkin in this shot. Uh huh. Is chat the treants just standing alongside you? Are those your little. Is that your, yeah, that's my your, club. That's your squad. <laughs> yeah. That's when they roll up with you. Oh no. I like how you got the randomization is you got like a blue one, a red one, and the brown one. It's good. Yeah, they, they came like that. I, I respect them all equally. They'll <laughs> do their job. <laughs> do they? Yep. So today we're talking about Balstruid. And every single spec gets a show. Balstruid's had shows in the past though. Like I've done shows specifically about balance druids. So you guys haven't had special treatment like other specs now that are like Fury Warrior coming up next. They have their own show and we had arms a while ago and every single spec now. It's it's not gonna happen. We're not getting through all 36 of them because Blizzard, you know, made 36 classes in this game now apparently. We'll see how Shadowlands changes that. But Bora, you are a little more of the fresher meat, at least in my corner of the internet. So just who the heck are you? I introduce yourself a little more completely for the internet. What do you do in the worlds of Warcrafts? What do you dabble in? How long have you been part of said dabbling? Uh, so I'm Bora. Uh, I've been, I've been playing WoW kind of on and off for a long time. Um, I started playing and reading seriously in uh, Miss Pandaria. 
or sorry, not Miss. Uh, I didn't play Miss Pinar. I started running seriously back in Wad. Okay. Uh, I've kind of been like in you know the higher end U- U.S. guilds, like you know fifty and thirty, and then eventually leaked to this tier. I started, you know, top twenty, top ten, and uh, I'm pretty happy with kind of what I've accomplished because I really enjoy you know raiding um, and progressing and killing bosses. Um, at the beginning of this t- at the beginning of this expansion. I picked up the Icy Veins guide and I tried to make it uh, my own, just tried to put as much work into it as possible so that everybody could learn the way that I've been learning over the last few years and what has helped me and the things that I've needed to hear to like progress myself and, and become a better player, and a better raider. And I try to put uh, as much of that into the guide as possible so that when people are starting out, they can maybe start out a little bit better you know, have more information. It's, you know, 2019 or 2020, the internet's out there. Mm -hmm. We can learn almost anything. It just depends on who you're hearing it from, because that's kind of the problem is sometimes less than reputable sources or people that speak with airs of confidences. And we're just trying to make sure we get the right information out and everyone can read it. Now, this is a bit of a, it doesn't always happen like this on, on my show, but Tettles, you helm the Wowhead Guide as well for balance druid yes sir and in doing that sort of as this little midpoint before i have you do your whole little opening spiel here is that do you do you two work together to like collaborate the information back and forth or do you both find your own things do you both have like your own ways of sorting through this like where how how because sometimes i get the, the feedback like the wowhead guide says this but icy vein says that so what do i do so how do, how do you how do the two like competing information pools work how do you how do you work what you do and then compared to what bora does so bora and i actually work together a pretty significant amount on what we're presenting to try to make sure that we're giving the most consistent and most well thought out information possible um most of our information comes from a couple of different people gender okay. currently maintains the balanced druid sim- simulation craft module and then gas tank and occasionally Jeebus will end up doing some different APL work to try to just give us a little bit more information as to what's what's possible. So big shout out to those three guys. Without it, without all of this, it would be very, very challenging because it would require a lot of effort from Bora and myself to be able to even get even close to the correct information in terms of just stupid stuff like, oh, is it worth the cancel aura Star Lord and just a bunch of different random stuff. Um, but yeah, Bora and I do work pretty much hand in hand and try to give the most consistent information and and make sure that all the players, no matter what site they go to, they are able to improve if they are trying to improve. Because I think that at the end of the day, we just want players to be able to get the information that they need. Bora even released like an article uh, recently that's talking about how to ask for questions and ask for feedback properly too, because... Uh, just uh, just the process of being able to give and get good feedback and good responses is very important as well. Yeah, actually, where is is that linked within the icy veins thread? Board, no, or? that's uh, that's on a completely different website. There, hmm. there is a balanced website, uh, specific or not balanced it's a druid specific website that we have called dreamgrove.gg. Yep. Um, the we try to put some articles in there. Uh, mm-hmm. All the specs try to have their own little thing. The guide up there isn't currently up to date. We might try to. We're gonna try to see if we can get it more up to date. But I've been putting out some articles that can, you know, like how to like view things from the perspective to uh, improve and improve your performance and and make your guild make yourself and your guild better and that kind of stuff. Because um, it, it's hard. You know, that's not something that's really uh, out there. It requires like a lot of you know logical steps and uh you know sometimes the you can't you don't always see everything going on so if you know what you're looking for it's a lot easier yeah it's so it's the evolution of and i would say too you started you said you started playing back in warlords and yeah. there is and i bring it up on show to show depends on the community about it but certain certain communities have definitely flourished they have obviously they all have discord servers now the World of Warcraft community like took to Discord like ducks to water like let's make this our thing and but other ones go like the next step where you have 
forward facing websites or blog posts or like where you coagulate all of information, kind of like what the rogues did back in the day. I'm thinking we made one of the first ones that did this with Ravenholt. And then you have obviously your your simulation craft, your APL people that work on like how to optimize and figure out what is working and what doesn't work. And I'm sure they're having a great time right now with all the corrupted gear. But mostly because World of Warcraft, despite what Ian and some of the devs might say, not as simple as a game as we might hope sometimes. So digging through all the different, you know, lowercase T's and everything else that you have to cross off and figure out, it's a lot to go through. So when did, Settles, when did you start working on all this stuff? Uh, I started writing the Wowhead guy like right before uh, BFA actually okay. came out. So like you I think took I got over asked from, in like, July. You took over from Sios though. Is that what the... Yeah, I took over from Sios. And then I think Bora got Icy Veins like right before I got the Wowhead one. So. No, I, I got a... I was doing editing. Um, yeah. In the in 2017, December 2017, I started kind of, it was more, it wasn't writing. Like I didn't, I wasn't like controlling everything that was on the page, but it was uh, fact checking and making sure this information is correct. It, it should be on the uh, website because, you know, it's not wrong, you know, as opposed right. to having wrong information in OD because the person writing it wasn't actually a balanced druid. So, you know, got to make sure check and get it all done. Yeah. I've heard that happen a couple times before too about, People that are writing them weren't necessarily, you know, die in the wool in that spec. So it's good to see that the communities all sort of take over the, the mantles as certain long time standing folks have sort of passed that on. But then, then Tettles, what you can, do you want to explain why you're a triple threat and who the heck are you and how long you've been dabbling in Moonkin? Oh, oh man, where do you want me to start? Uh, so I actually started playing Moonkin in warlords i actually started playing oh, wow yeah. and warlords not even just moonkin yeah well i think Bor was playing the game before mm. i was at least casually yeah casually. Yeah. i i literally picked up the game for the first time like in blackrock foundry so it's been it's been a little bit but i'm still fairly new to the game i guess relative to a lot of people who pick up wor world of warcraft um and then legion came out and i really had in a i really enjoyed mythic plus and i think that's probably where it all started because i started playing mythic plus a little bit more competitively and then through through a series of luck and events, I had hard work, I guess. I four manned the MDI and then started. And then from that, somehow I got the Wowhead Guide Writer. And then now I'm casting Race to World First stuff in the most roundabout, tangential ways <laughs> possible. Yeah. I mean, I, I met you previously before the race to world first stuff kicked off in like the wow community things and then all of a sudden when you and i were like oh we're both going to this thing oh <laughs> and that was that was 2019 for us essentially so we'll see where 2020 goes but yeah then you did the mdi and the next pfft, next mdi season is going to be squished in there with beta testing shadowlands have fun with that Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. It's gonna be a. It's gonna have to overlap, right? Because beta probably yeah. starts here in March, April, somewhere in there. I guess, I guess right? Yeah, that, that wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But all right. So normally, how see podcasts or newsy oriented shows work is that it sort of leave the the juicy topic for like halfway through or towards the end to sort of keep your attention and wait for all the viewers to no we're not doing that today <sighs> there's a giant whole overarching pink elephant in this room that we're going to talk about it's potentially some in some way the name of this video on youtube if you're watching it there if you're watching it live of course it's what i sort of opened the show with the this current situation in which starfall this incredibly iconic druid spell and sometimes, you know, very dangerous. But in some cases right now in BFA, there are stories of literally players taking it off their bars. So I don't know about how spells should be just removed from your bars. You're not using it anymore. So all I have in the notes right here on this first topic is that there are a number of reasons for this. But please, uh, Bants. So uh, Tettles, you want to start us off? Why is Starfall so bad? I mean, I guess the core of the reason that Starfall is bad is because they refuse to tune it 
better. I, I, I guess would be just like the most direct approach is because they, they were refusing to buff it. Um, but it's actually currently bad for like a multitude of reasons. Uh, basically, our damage from Star Surge scales too well, just with stuff like Arcanic Pulsar and Streaking Stars, which are two Azerite traits that are fairly important to the balance um, to the balance kit. In addition to that, balance really doesn't gain anything from Star Falling outside of just damage. Like in, in Tears Past, we got stuff from like Stellar Drift with Onus Intuition. The uh, Onus Intuition was a legendary that whenever you cast Star Surge or Star Fall, you had a chance to proc the other side for free, but um now with like all of that being removed the fact that you never really play stellar drift the value of starfall itself has gone down pretty substantially and I, I guess all in in addition to that they decided that they wanted to balance starfall around being used to on the three to four target realm as opposed to the occasional single target that we saw in legion but mostly two target cleave so i, I think all of that combined is the reason that we're now starting to star fall on like seven, like the seven to eight target range, which is a really, really cool phenomenon. Yep. I think you're, I think you're a little too hard on star fall. It, it's, it has a lot of good like purposes to it. Um, you can actually use it to like knock rogues out of stealth at the beginning of arena. <laughs> really. But, uh, and I think there's a boss next year mm -hmm. where you got to like knock ro like NPC rogues out of stealth. So, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Honestly, I don't really understand why people are complaining. It's it's not oh. like it's not like we went through an expansion where Starfall had like multitudes of you know factors that scaled our dots. It it had artifact scaling, um, and then they 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 took all that away. And then like if they took all that away, yeah, it's it's fine. Like it would have it probably would have been usable, right? Mm -hmm. But then but then they said, okay, we took all that away. Um, and Starfall is like kind of okay, but it's not too great now. We're not going to take away the dot scaling. I'm like, uh, all right, well, it doesn't, you're, so it's just damage now. I'm like, yeah, it's just damage now. Your dots, they do normal damage all the time. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, by the way, we're also going to nerf Stellar Drift uh, to 20%. So like, it's not going to like do anything anymore. We think it's more utility option. I'm like, okay, well, that sucks, but uh, all right. And then, oh, and by the way, we're also just gonna nerf starfall right like it's we, do, we don't really want you to cast that button anymore press that button uh, it, it, it's like i don't it, it was almost like they didn't factor in the fact that legion was like we were losing so much in legion as a yeah. class and then they're like okay well this is what starfall's doing we're not thinking that how much of it is in the artifact or something but we're going to nerf these other things, which would have been fine if it still did all the things it used to do. But it doesn't. It's just it's a button to press to do damage. It doesn't it doesn't interact with any other spell like like start like Star Surge does. Um, it just you press it, it does damage and it doesn't do a lot of damage. Well, the, the, another issue that is overly problematic is once you actually start having your main AOE filler balanced around something that is so substantial, like seven to eight targets, it's going to be so infrequently pressed just because the priority damage that you would gain from Star Surge more often than not is going to be higher value as opposed to even casting Starfall just because of the inefficiency of the cleave. Uh, ba basically, even if you have eight targets, there is likely a target that has higher priority than some of those eight. Like, like out of the eight mobs, there's probably one that's just worth twice as much to do damage to. Yeah. Our AoE right now, uh, for the most part, outside of some, uh, you know, super crazy circumstances, is just pure single target, but make sure every target, if there are, is there, if there is another target, just make sure it's dotted. Like, that. that's it. Right. And then just hit one mob. And that's I'm kind of boring. I, I don't know. Like, I've, I, like, I feel like, you know, all of the expansions I've played, you do different things when I even you don't single target, right? Like there's, there's a change Your your play style isn't the same from the start of the expansion to the end of the expansion. That's kind of what, what happened because of like this AOE nerf and putting some, like some minor cleave into, you know, empowerments and, and, and lunar strike it just kind of, you know, just died right like just it's just what's a one kind of one dimensional spec yeah i would i would agree with that and i would agree with that sentiment but at the same vein 
Moonkid does feel good on single target, which is really nice because of Arcanic Pulsar and Streaking Stars. So it's mm -hmm. like a really rough spot because we don't want to see it nerfed, yet we want our AoE filler to be a usable ability. It's weird. So you're obviously the astral power system is a builder spender by default. Similar to how Maelstrom works on Elemental Shaman, builder spender. You build, you spend on Earth Shock, or you build and spend on Earthquake. And Elemental Shaman, for the longest time, and even in this go around, has seen a similar, like, weird, tumultuous nature for also different, weird, blizzard, maybe possibly spaghetti codish reasons about how Earthquake works. They removed hay scaling from it back in Legion because Cephus was just like completely nonsensical with it. Also, it's a physical damage ability that doesn't get locked out the same way other spell schools get locked out, but also bypasses armor, but because normally physical stuff would do up to 35% less. Uh, it's obviously way smaller than Starfall. You can also cast, I don't know how fast you can cast Starfalls back to back like you can with Earthquakes. So there is like a layering yeah, problem there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but how fast you can build to cast and build to cast again. Whereas uh, yeah. it's somewhere in the we range of like 10 seconds. Time. Yeah, we can yeah. cast two at a time though by pooling. I don't know right. if, what yeah. is elemental shaman's threshold. Is it 60 or 60, 75? Yeah. 75 or? In the, in that so realm. yeah, you couldn't so cast two at the same time, You like which kind of right. limits like it's a little bit awkward instead of like, oh, burst AOE. Mm -hmm. One thing, chain lightning, second thing, and then you're kind of spent for a while. So yeah. you know, kind of definitely see kind of the issue so i guess that the whole point i was coming around there is that elemental shaman still uses earthquake like just totally fine right now on a handful of targets and above because there's not a gigantic disparity between how they and they can still even like damage funnel because you're still gonna like you still cross dot three flame shock targets you still get your your lava bolts you throw it for meatballs your lava bursts out there right and you have those choices where it just seems like there's that extra step that balance has that it's either lots of targets that you're just hitting your sunfires, your moonfires and your starfalls. But again, that's what they, they removed your starfall scaling with your dots like it used to. And it's all kind of comes back around what titles is saying. So Azerite and to an extent, the essence system right now, and you both wanted to bring this up. So Bora, you could bring this up to start this next part off is that, do you feel stuck because what happens when Balanced Druid goes into Shadowlands and loses all of this? Uh, there was the time in the Legion pre-patch. Um, or sorry, no, no, we, uh, all right. I leveled on uh, the the pre-patch. Or I leveled on the beta with another mm -hmm. person. We both played Balanced Druid. It was the most miserable experience of my life. Oh, no. And it would be, because <laughs> the class didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. <laughs> I do remember that. You remember it, that clip? Nagura had a clip where she cast, like, it was, like, on pull. It was, like, eight solar rats in a row, just back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And she didn't yeah. press anything else. Yeah. And and that's that's what we're back to at the end of this expansion. That's that's what we're back to. The, the, the only thing keeping this, like, iteration alive is the... is streaking, pulser visions all these little things even the first year like i mean we had it was just streaking right and it was boring you had streaking and you had archive and most people just went for triple archive you didn't have the second ring the class is boring didn't do a lot uh there was a time like we would like sim like if you went into a raid talentless it was only like a 10 percent loss or something yeah it was like, like oh, 10 God, or 50 it that was, was so good it was it was such a it was such a bad class and then and then they bring arcanic and everyone's like holy shit this is this could be like it right like this is this is awesome mm -hmm. you know this is gonna bring something and then double ring so arcanic triple streaking you know arcanic and streaking working so well together and they bring in visions and they just keep piling everything on the star surgeon on the ca through the through the spec everything's just piled into these like you know couple abilities couple traits and we're going to lose that and they're either going to rework the spec slightly i don't think we're going to get another big rework i think that would be strange um they either need to rework the spec slightly or they need to give us some crazy thing in in again in uh in the next expansion and we're just going to be tied to it again and it's just going to keep 
the cycle of just being tied to and just getting weaker between expansions, right? Like I think that's that's probably the best way to put it is you feel weaker when the next expansion comes around instead of like you went from being super strong at all your stuff and now you lost everything in your week and that's kind of the problem with the current design system blizzard has that i think a lot of people have a problem with yeah it's the i just the other night on the bay at night stream playing destiny 2 had the same sort of discussion about how blizzard has this they basically make a brand new painting every expansion and then two years later they just push that painting over and start a whole new painting and every time they just keep reiterating all these systems and you build up all these things you really enjoy, you start to really understand like sort of the end of Legion where we had our two, uh, our two legendaries and our artifact all sorted out and like our rotations had like these ebbs and flows we were getting used to and understood finally. And nope, it's gone. So, and they do it again with Azerite gear and to some degree, obviously Azerite gear is, is definitely a tipping point for some people if you've been playing the game right now where it's just not fun. But once you get beyond the not fun part of acquiring Azerite gear, and of course the essence system is great on one character, albeit not great for alts, sorry, a uh, little bit easier yeah. in the patch, but, and, and that's all going to go away. And if they're going to re-baseline us again, the only things we've seen so far is obviously the craftable legendaries that we're getting in Torghast. The perks, of course, that you can choose from and where they go, we don't know yet. They're they're part of like the card system of buffs, like the Binding of Isaac items you can get in Torghast. They'll, of course, be a hierarchy. You know, if there's Arcanic Pulsar on pants, you're gonna you're gonna make them right. Whatever they gotta do, right? They're gonna do something like that, or there'll be something totally brand new. Yeah, Bay, talk to me again. Tell me about every every nine closer. thrashes procs um, <laughs> guardian. Oh, like the the incarn. Yeah, that, there you go. Oh yes, <laughs> that's what I'm really hoping for. <laughs> oh no, but but yeah, it, it's just weird because they don't temper like what they're taking away, and they don't re they don't really have a clear understanding of what specs want it, and like how they function. Because yeah. whenever you're looking at a spec in the beta, typically they are complete in the sense of like, sure, I guess technically you can walk into a raid and you can hit your buttons and do damage but then you have like a huge discrepancy of does this feel good in like a lot of specs and a lot of classes are just like missing one or two things especially at the beginning of expansions just because they strip so much to what so much away at the very end which i don't mind i don't really mind that they do huge overhauls coming into expansions mm -hmm. but they do need to be a little bit more uh, aware of what they're taking away and why some things are fun well, that's a very good point, and we'll get a little bit more to that in an upcoming segment. But, Bora, unless you had anything to add to this oh. chunk, I have a follow-up for you both. All right. So this one actually came to me. A friend of mine suggested this. Kind of, It's kind of like big brain, so I'm going to go Bora on this one first to give you a little more time to think about this, Tettles. But, uh... <laughs> what are you saying? Are you saying I have a big brain, or does oh, Tettles wait, have a I, no, small I think, brain? You just shit just, on me. What is? What is? What are we implying here? Is do you play Balanced Druid because you're? This is like multi pronged question. All right, so take this in. Do you play Balanced Druid because you're good at it, or because that's how you connect with this class and spec overall, and how you enjoy World of Warcraft? Or because that is how is what you're asked of by your guild and the progression you're pushing for. So where where does that decision? Because if you right now like I can just play warlock and always have a raid spot and be OP. So how do you come to that conclusion to play balanced druid? Um, I don't know. I I mean I'm I'm okay at it. I'm not the the best. I think I got a little bit worse this expansion for sure. But I, I do enjoy the class. I enjoy playing it, for sure. And generally, I can do things on Balanced Druid occasionally that, uh, you know, make me more valuable to my raid theme and to my guild. So I'm uh, I'm pretty okay. Like, uh, it's kind of, I mean, a little bit of all three. I just I just like playing it. I, ha I had a swap to Hunter for one boss this entire expansion. It was, it was pretty miserable. It honestly, it honestly was, you know, and like not being as good as, you know, I was on my other class, but having that one little bit of extra utility that I could bring right. because, you know, I do value my guild's progression and, and, you know, I thought that it was the, the play. 
Um, so, and that kind of opened my eyes a little bit more after I finally went back, you know, I was back to it. I was, you know, doing more damage than my hunter. I was, you know, not hating raid as much. Uh, so I, I definitely think this is just my class, you know, just down, down to, you know, down to the core, no matter if it's good or bad. It's just kind of, just kind of me. Okay. And Tettles, of course, the same follow-up question. What, what, how do you come to that conclusion on this? Because you, is as more of a wow baby, depending on how you want to look at that, even playing the game for like seven years, right? So how does that decision come from your, because you're also up there in the hierarchy of like guilds that progress rather quickly. So is it, because you could play some of it's more meta, right? But. Yeah, I mean, so technically I could play something that's more meta. Uh, the process to be able to reroll for some people is not exactly that easy. And I would say that it like multi-classing definitely does not come super second nature to me. So it would require a lot of time. I do believe that I could probably do it if I spent enough time, but if we're, if we're speaking specifically for raid, I don't think there is a world where balance to it is bad enough in raid to where it could not be brought Sure. just because of how aggressive they've been tuning. They, they tune raid pretty well across class diversity, like uh, all specs sim within like 10%, right? And they're they're normally pretty good about making sure that the hybrids are within the realm of playability, mm. at, at least at least playable, um, and, unless you're melee for some reason, but that's a different dichotomy, I guess, right? Um, it also has range going for it, which is nice. I, I could reroll, but realistically, I don't think I'm like super sick. The only reason that I ever would is if balance is so far bad in Mythic Plus that I feel like I would not be able to play Mythic Plus at all, then I would probably pick up a second character, but I don't think I would ever re-roll for raid. No. I mean, speaking about the, the Mythic Plus specifically, I just have like a footnote there because I have a section of this later on. What's like, what's your biggest key you've done in time on a balance tree right now? Uh, 24. I mean, so obviously you're fine. You're not don't need to run yeah. like triple melee to do big boy keys. No, 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 no. And uh, honestly, I could probably get like if even if balance is super bad, I can I can still do some keys. Like I'll just get invited because I've been doing Mythic Plus for so long and it's only it honestly Mythic Plus is pretty toxic and it's strictly community based, but even if I'm playing a terrible class, I could still get into some groups, right? Hmm. So then I guess with all of the well, hopefully all, if not most of the Starfall talk out of the way, at least in the overall point of the show is to drill it into the ground. But I want to go back. <laughs> I don't need to drill it into the ground. It's already there. Oh, no. Yes, uh, I want to go <laughs> the, the, the topic that I bring up on every one of these shows now sort of as a segue into how we're looking at going into Shadowlands then is going back through time, reminiscing about expansions past. Now, each of you, of course, chat can chime in or YouTube comments can chime in, of course, is that everyone has different things that they remember. And I usually preface this by going back to MOP, where MOP was the change of the talent system. So MOP to Warlords to Legion to currently to BFA, and then, of course, the feature to Shadowlands a year from now. Is there something from a past iteration and version of the Moonkin that you miss that you'd like to have back? Or the Druid class itself? Heart of the Wild. And why? Um, I mean, that's just, that's, like, Heart of the Wild is literally just the ultimate Druid spell. When you, when you think about, like, get super nerdy with it, and you get, like, super into it, if you actually like, get super into it, like, if you think about it, Heart of the Wild is literally the perfect Druid spell, you know? Like, the ability to shape shift in your form to do something, and, uh, you know, like, it's clutch. Oh, the tank tied. I got a tank taunt. Like instead of instead of taunting the boss and pretty much instantly dying and just trying to run as far away as possible, you taunt it, you tank it a little bit, and then you die, right? Uh, you, it's just, or you know, you need to heal, and then you, you, your your heals do more. It's just, it, it literally is just the ultimate ability. Like just being able to flex. Like that's that's the whole point. It's the first class with four specs, four four specializations. Well, you know, I mean, well, three me, specializations, but two of the two DPS specializations. Let me ask you a little bit more direct question about that. Then, what do you? How do you feel about the affinity system? I mean, it's like it's just a kind of a knockoff thing. Like it's pretty good, but it's not. Um, I generally you aren't picking it for their their overall utility, and only one of them really has a lot of utility. 
uh, and that's the restoration one, which is why we use it. And it's also the self healing's nice. But yeah. the other ones don't really have. I mean, it's just. I mean, it literally is just you know specking into your one heart of the wild, right? Like instead of just instead of just being good at all three or like mediocre at all three for the while you're just like eh six percent damage reduction eh frenzied regen but which also got nerfed so that's why we don't actually use it but, yeah switch uh, hitters op i don't know what you're on about yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh switch hitter yeah well that's i mean that was a follow-up in, in some way is there's a couple of things that have, i've kind of come up before in other druid shows uh any any symbiosis fans I think I think that's like obviously the most common commonly requested one to return because it was so overpowered. Well, I, I feel like it is a bit much. Mm. Um I, I obviously never played with it, but whenever I read about it on paper, it reads like it is a a bit egregious of an ability, I must say, especially since you're able to steal stuff like ice block and cloak. Um yeah, pretty cool. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> okay, yeah. honestly, it sounds like such a fantastic ability, but it also seems For me. Yeah. so obscene to balance. You're just like, I don't really know what to do with something like that. Right? Why does mm -hmm. it? Why does it need to be balanced? Just give, just give you know, me, yeah. give me cloak of shadows, dude. Like, give, let me, let me do what I've always wanted to do. I don't know. They made havoc, demon hunter. You may, you may be right. I, I made. I'm just wrong here. How Somebody about, else should probably just return. Then how I, about our... Yeah, Bor, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I've heard... I, I think that's, like, split. Like, some people loved it for the same reason, like, I'm talking about it. Like, just, just having... Just being able to snag that extra damage or, or you know, that utility. Like, again, like, that's the whole class fantasy is just kind of having the, the, the flexibility. Yeah. Uh, but then some people hated it because... And I think the reason that some people might have hated it more because is because of the ten man system. Now I know mm. some a lot of people like the ten man, but but the fact of like your ten man druid, you have a lot less options versus the twenty five man where you have more options. So maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't play that uh, that expansion, so uh, just I'm just kind of going off what I've heard in stories. So here, how about we're still in the realm of something from past versions, full moon as new moon now in the current talented version are either of you in the camp of bring back the artifact version make it baseline um, there's like a back and forth on this almost like an apple versus pc debate where right. some That'd really love it AP. and well too much we're, get your tinfoil already... hats out hold on hold on get your tinfoil hats out tinfoil. i bet i swear I think they actually only made it a tier 100 talent because there was so much backlash about it and they're intentionally tuning it poorly so they can strip it away in Shadowlands and just completely remove it because they don't want it to actually be into the game. And no one no one talked about New Moon and in, in, in uh in BFA. It's probably it's, it's bad. Been... Gonna... It's getting hurricaned and it's getting uh, yeah. demonology warlocked right now. Um, no, holy so where it's just so bad that sense. nobody ever plays it and then you're just like It's now is Oh, it... they took that away. I kind of wanted that. It's such a unique, well, at least the second cast, kind of, but the third cast obviously was is a hugely awesome, like, spell moment, like, the animation-wise. But I guess, is, did it not actually do as much as people think it did in Legion? To oh, it was really good. Was yeah. it really, the Legion version, yeah. though, not the current one. Uh, yeah, really good in uh, Legion. It was okay. it was really good whenever you were it wearing enabled. Radiant Moonlight, I guess. No, even, <laughs> even before then, like, it just, just think, like, think about, like, the, the, just being able to burn something, start surge, like full moon surge, surge, right? Like okay, that was yeah. a lot of burst, right? Yeah, and never mind. Having the forty AP full moon into and because you know in Legion we had more talent variety and uh, because you know all our spells did stuff instead of uh, haha, we just talked about it with Starfall, you know, you could full moon Starfall, full moon star surge. Uh, that that was that was great. That build that ability was so good. It was really bad on AoE, but it, it was really good for burst damage, like Bora was saying, because you could pool up. I, I totally did forget about. Well, the, no, full moon, full moon, starfall. Like, it, I mean, just just the fact that it gives you forty AP, right? Yeah, yeah. It gives you so much AP, and especially when you have that radiant moonlight talent or uh, I, legendary. I actually got asked this uh, a couple days ago, and they were asking me which iteration of moon can I prefer between Warlords Legion and Battle for Azeroth, and like how yeah. I would rank them. And I actually put Warlords up in front of BFA, uh, like with the old Eclipse system and stuff like that, with the charges of Star Surge and Starfall. Bora, do you think that BFA is better than Warlords? 
Was that the version that played think, itself for you? Yeah, yes. it was the metronome one. It was just it like was, you it have was the to cast one. these abilities at these times, and if you get lucky, you do extra damage, right? Uh, which was which is cool. I mean, I definitely I, I liked the, the charge. Reactive. I liked the charge star surge starfall. Was what yeah. I actually liked about it more than anything else. True. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely the fact that. I don't know, yeah, you're I mean I kinda I think it's definitely a little bit better. I think BFA is too kinda like I said, like the one dimensional kit. Um, even if, you know, everything did stuff, uh mm-hmm. but but even still, like it's pretty slow when you think about it, and the only reason it doesn't feel because I mean the only thing that saved the base spec was uh we have one passive and it's called um find it real quick. Eclipse it's called uh is that the yeah, eclipse the eclipse passive, the only thing yeah. that saved it. It's the only reason we aren't completely starved and casting like thousands of of, of solar ass every fight it, it gives as every your solar ass has a 20 percent chance to proc a lunar empowerment and your uh lunar strike has a 20 percent chance to proc the, the solar empowerment and that's literally the only thing keeping the spec of float keeping this this iteration of, of balance true to float at the base level i think that was part of the feedback i remember giving going from legion into bfa is that the rotation and the the play style of balance was so set. You yes. just did this, and then you spent. You did that, and you spent. I needed something else, and Blizzard sort of re kafoodled the eclipse. It's basically just it's a it's divine purpose for a balance druid. Yeah, but it gives so, you yeah. enough that spice to shake it up a little bit. I don't. I actually just hate it. I think it's mm. not. I think it's not enough. So basically, what they mm. tried to use is they tried to make eclipse replace. Uh, full moon and onus intuition yeah. in one like passive and onus was of course like the again star star surge gives you a 20 percent chance to get a free starfall thing that broke up the monotony of your rotation so they yeah. were they were trying to use one passive to fill two abilities and it's not that sick but it, it is it's better than not having it i guess if, if you yeah. had to really instead of really instead of giving you a fourth button to cast <laughs> it gives you another third button to cast. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so like normally you wouldn't cast like lunar strike more than the the one time you you surge because you get the one empowerment each time, but uh but sometimes you get to cast uh, extra lunar strikes and that's that's okay, right? So and they do they do a little more damage and they cast a little faster. Pretty pretty dope, right? So that brings us into essentially you, you've segued naturally into what do you think in the current version of BFA's balanced druid kit can just be yeeted and Tattles thinks Eclipse uh I think Eclipse needs to be changed I don't think Eclipse should just be gone okay Uh, again I'm I'm big on the onus intuition passive if that was baseline that would be pretty sick uh but I have a seeking suspicion that they just hated Starfall on single target, so that shit's never coming back. Yeah. And they make Fury Warriors Whirlwind on single target. How does that make you feel, Titles? That is that is a bit strange, honestly, the fact that they whirlwind single target, but whatever. Same it's the same strange thing that Demon Hunters I beam single target, I guess, right? Well, that was that was to give Demon Hunters another ability because we had three buttons in all of Legion and now we have three point five. So yay, I guess. Yeah, they read, they read, but that, that's the thing. They, they reset. I beam was definitely more of a AOE ability last expansion. Now it's just a rotational ability because it deals more yeah. damage to your primary target and then AOEs around it for half. So, and I, I like, I like how Demon Hunter feels to play. Like it feels fine, right? It, it feels smooth. like I beam should be. Yeah. It sh- it should be a single target ability, right? But th- there is. There's something missing about balance whenever the, you strip the base kit down. Like mm-hmm. Streaking Stars and Arcanic Pulsar bring that extra something that you want to make the spec feel fun to play. But whenever you like really boil it down to its its basics, it feels pretty bad. It, yeah. it also doesn't help that our our uh, cooldown is pretty terrible as well, especially mm-hmm. if you don't have Streaking Stars. I remember at the beginning of the expansion, it was actually like a it was like only a 300 DPS increase whenever people were simming for like. 18 or 20k or whatever it was like it was some absurdly low amount of damage but now they made it give 40 astral power on cast and stuff like that so it's a little bit better so then bora do you think because this came up in chat even and mike preach he makes a bunch of videos talks about his thoughts on the game what he sponges up on the internet of course too and whenever i have mike on the show that's sort of his 
big addition to this is because he just he gets this giant net of and that's why I, the true shot lodge is going to shut down because of mike obviously because he said that hunters are worthless in the next raid Me <laughs> oh, true. memes aside he really wants because he plays bounce druid he wants the that full moon version baseline so is there anything else you think could be removed from the kit maybe to make room for full moon uh i mean they the also turn thing... one of the dots right no <laughs> mm. relax there buddy oh Just relax we, we like we like both dots definitely uh well, i think are I you talking about solar flare power. uh they, I, they oh, could get rid of that it's bad i mean like th th like you look at the talent tree and blizzard ob tried to like thematically align it so that everything was like a choice but like some of those choices are really really bad uh i don't know like if you're it would probably only the only thing they could probably remove is um either nature's balance and give it to you in a cast and i'm not sure i think it's it's i mean it's a lot of ap like like New Moon is a decent amount of AP because nature's mm. used to compete with nature's balance. Maybe. Uh, I think I think that's it. I think that's the only thing. Like if you're looking at the talent, like if you swapped it into one of those, maybe. Yeah, that would, that would be about it. Okay. It's all it's all building up because this whole thing. I want to put a Shadowlands bow on this discussion because we are all at least to begin with putting our faith in the great unpruninator, Brian Holinka, returning to us from parts unknown at Blizzard now to be, he's the director of WoW Combat. That is his job, his title, one of his many hats, I'm sure. And it is upon his shoulders and the team that he's formed around him internally to unprudinate, to bring back totems, apparently, because searing totems coming back. No, it's, maybe, I don't know. So... What what do you hope? What are your hopes and dreams for what Halinka and his team will bring to druids, either druids or to balance? Because they want to make you feel like more of a druid across the board. And obviously, you already brought up part of the wild, the whole druid spec flexing thing. That's what Bora you, brought up. Yeah. And do you want the the damage stuff, or do you want like the utility stuff? Like what what right. could go into the kit that's damage or, or like utility? Because Yo, hit me with Ursul's baseline and Cyclone baseline. I'm two thumbs up on that. That is, that is going to be a good <laughs> change. Really? Yeah, we, I need I need more utility. That's what I was really hoping for. Thank you. Mm. I think uh, I think something like Stampeding Roar could exist with like the limitation of being informed. Oh no, he said it. it. He said it. With the limit, I mean that's that is a limitation I need for all sure, the buttons, baby. Give me them for all. sure. Like like having to like if it if sandpeating roar legitimately costs to do two globals, it would be eh, slightly more balanced. Like you'd have to be, you can't just press it, you know, instantly. But okay. uh, in terms of damage, a lot of legion legendary effects I'd like back. You know, like the onus, uh, even emeralds. Like the I mean, not the, like I don't think like the super latency and like emerald version was very good personally but maybe the later version wasn't nearly as bad uh because it used to be like you needed like you actually needed like a certain ping to like play the spec and always get it in if you lagged you just it instantly yeah. dropped and you couldn't keep it up anymore it was miserable i didn't have it but i know some people had it and the the difference between the good players that had it and the the bad players was uh, I think that insane. is a problem. Yeah, I think, I think that's that a, problem. a problem. That's why. That's why I'm saying. I think like the 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 not the one that wasn't as crazy, uh, like the 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 more forgiving one for sure. Uh, but th that's kind of like like have reducing the cost of of Star Surge like interactive, you know. Yeah, well, I, 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 th oh. I think that sh in shooting stars should also be baseline, basically, it, like some undiminished return version of it. Uh, it, I know it doesn't read that it gives diminishing returns based on additional targets in the tooltip, but it does. So it's really bad on AoE. So our generation of um, astral power on AoE is pretty questionable, especially whenever you have to dot as many targets as you do sometimes. So 
I don't know. That that would be what I would change. Yeah. Well, hold on. I I want to make sure. I think this this didn't come across completely here. You want to come none... back? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the streaking stars nonsense on AOE, and one of the other problems with again because it's the whole pink elephant thing. Is this one of those abilities that technically has target caps in the proc because it only will ever proc on so many mobs at any given time? How did that work? What is the? It only procs on one target. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. So it doesn't matter how many targets you hit with it. No, but it does a lot of damage to that one target. Sure. So you're basically doing your single target burst. Your you have more haste, and you have everything dotted, and you're cleaving a little bit. But that one target's getting obliterated. That's kind of the strength of of the class in Mythic Plus. Uh, okay. In terms of damage, in terms of their output and stuff like that. I want to make sure I didn't like actually, miss. Oh no. Oh, yeah, and you actually can't control what target is getting hit by the Streaking Stars proc either. So, right. if you're if you're like cleaving with a Lunar Strike, sometimes it will actually just go in a target that you're not targeting, which is kind mean, of frustrating. Do you mean Shooting Stars, or do you mean Streaking the the, the target cap thing you're talking about? Or are you talking about when you the the AP effects from the dots? Or are you talking about Streaking Stars? Oh yeah. Okay, I wasn't I wasn't sure because they they're. They're, they sound similar, right? No, I know. I, I was trying to make sure I didn't miss here because I thought there was some weird. I, I, it's because you because titles you said streaking stars, correct? The oh, no, I said I said shooting stars. You're I'm talking about the, shooting. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about the talent, the tier 100 talent. Too many stars, man. Uh, I got yeah. Shooting stars. Maybe, gotcha. Stars maybe I said the wrong thing. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, sh streak, uh, shooting stars gives astral power like occasionally whenever you have targets that are dotted but it yeah. gives it at like a really diminished rate similar like even worse than agony from affliction lock giving um shards it's like really bad and mm. uh that needs to be probably uncapped to where we're actually able to do aoe because the just the amount of targets that you have to moonfire inside of like some like occasionally you just have to moonfire just a ton of targets and it's not really yeah. feasible for you to be able to uh, generate enough AP for Starfall. Okay. Well, Bora, I have a question for you from Guilty. Okay. <clears throat> he wants to know if you finished ramping yet. I'm ramping all the way till the day I die. Okay. This brings me to, can you share, I want to go over some current math that may or may not be changing at 8.3 here as we shift over to the Visions of Nazoth, which will be upon us in a month or so, I guess, mid January, right after the Cross anniversary. Fingers, no more, yeah. no more Jara. Is the so the nerfs of the multi dot classes that are coming up in patch eight point three, and the the potential final patch, of course, of BFA. This might be like an eight three five with maybe a holdover, you know, setup thing, whatever. But I don't. There's only no major content, I don't think. So what does that mean exactly for the cross dot? class nerfs and then i guess to go deeper is balanced druid as we've talked about before it kind of you can cross dot but are you in the same realm as like the weird damage funnel pattern that shadow priests like do warlocks or and shadow warlocks? Priests. yeah uh no we're not we're not there um really it which is kind of it kind of sucks how to get nerfed but they're kind of nerfing all of them all i guess they uh, did they nerf all like uh more than just shadow was it was it affliction lock and all, like was it all the multi dot classes i only saw i think it was everything two. except for ellie it was everything except for ellie well yeah I, I mean if you look at the raid there's so much that like if if you had full strength shadow priests in that raid like you're just you're just dotting everything and everything's rotting there's so many targets there's so many things to rot so many things to burst so many ads, like there's so many ads in that raid for some reason. Right. It's a lot, a lot of multi dot capability. So I'd imagine that they probably nerf all the multi dotters so that it's easier to balance those sort of fights. You have in the past your covens and your queen courts, and uh, and other similar multi multi target fights. Uh, I'm trying to think of like harder ones, I guess. I'm not trying to think of like the easy ones. It doesn't really matter what you bring to it, but those are the two that come to mind. Where you just bring like a certain spec, and if it can hit a second target without being in like without like needing to hit it, right? Like it would be uh, it, it should be nerfed so that they, so it's easier to balance those sort of fights. 
You know, it's hysterical to me though. The fact that all the other multi-dot specs actually gain some single target benefit out of a second dot, yet we don't. Like, uh, we actually lose damage by multi-dotting. We lose single target damage on by our main target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, on a fight like Orgazoe, you would rather just not dot at all. You would rather just like pound the boss the whole entire time. Because again, you you streaking stars can randomly proc off on other targets. Reducing your damage to the main boss. No, he's talking, stre he's talking streaking. He's talking about like how it will randomly proc on some target. You remember Jaina? Like Bora, we would have logs where people would do like 300k damage to the elemental because streaking oh. would just pop oh. off on the Ellie. That's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> That's what I mean, because obviously, like Shadow Priests, if they VT each other pain other targets to help gain insanity to funnel into one, right? All of a sudden, their apparitions are going out there, giving them more insanity so they can funnel into one target. And to a, a lesser-ish extent, obviously Affliction can do some of that, even though Destruction is like what everyone's playing right now and may still be a big thing next next tier. So we'll see. Even though they did buff the single target of Affliction Warlocks with buffing, bringing back essentially their Execute in, um, in Siphon. So we'll see about that, if that works. Uh, or Drain Soul, rather, right? Drain Soul got buffed. And, and then, yeah, and then, then that... I feel like you put... You can put your dots out, but again, like you've all both said, you're like a single target, you know, machine, basically. Really. We like have... we like hitting we like hitting that thing as hard as often as possible with spells that aren't dots, yeah, for right. sure. <laughs> but we yeah. should have everything dotted so we do more damage to everything overall. Right. So we look... It's just that the dots don't actually give us any value outside of being high DPET abilities. And and that's that's why I'm not opposed to actually removing one of the dots. Like circling back to your questions earlier about mm -hmm. if I had to remove something, it, it would probably be one of the dots because we are just a builder spender that has really bad dots. We're not like mm -hmm. a multi dotter, really. Well, that goes back to For now. Didn't it's true. <laughs> Moonfire Sunfire used to be the same spell based on what cycle you're in, correct? Is that how that used to work back in the day? Yeah. So when you were in, we were in solar. It was sunfire, and it hit less on you'd have cast. To refresh and it. So you refresh it. Some some cycles you'd refresh it, like because right at the end. Longer. Sometimes you could yeah. get a little bit because it didn't do damage. You try to refresh it right. But then they they split them apart, and then they gave them the resto. Right, they have both two, so they split the two when they made you like a builder spender class. But okay, that's what I was curious about because I, I I saw those nerfs, and I didn't really know if that was gonna matter for balanced druid because i never really thought they're a doesn't affect what we're doing no. at the end of the day yeah e even in the most strict content where multi-dotting is the most important such as mythic plus or council style fights it's not going to change us at all really it okay. we're it's going to be like a sub like five percent damage nerf it's literally going to be like a two or three percent damage nerf our eye level is going up 40 so yeah you could cut down your Moonfire damage by 11%, and then you gain 40 eye levels eventually over the course of the next tier. You're right back to... It doesn't even matter, right? So it's Plus, we're getting buffed elsewhere. It, so it's not oh. even like a fair comparison. We're getting... Vision of Perfection is getting buffed, basically. So that's uh -huh. going to be our go-to go essence. So Okay. So then... Wow. You you almost brought this up naturally, Tettle. So here here is your your chance. All right, you only have a little bit of time. You don't have three days to talk about this, but I want to talk about uh, the U word. Uh, that's utility, and by utility I mean can you defend the case that's been made against the Moonkin in some circles on the internet that uh, you're merely a treant bot brought to Mythic Plus keys? I have Solar Beam. Uh, and I have large amounts of single target damage. Oh, well, uh, I, I would say case made. Yeah, I would say balance is pretty bad on lower level keys, though. Um, it it only starts to get good once you put it in the hands of players that are very it, running in very coordinated groups, doing very high keys, mm -hmm. to where trash packs aren't getting like instantly blown up because our damage ramp takes a while just via uh, celestial alignment or incarn or whatever you're playing. Right. Um. That plus the utility is only super relevant once you start getting up to higher levels. And then obviously our AoE is just... The, the crux of it is that our AoE is just bad. So we're doing... You're, you're fighting an uphill battle to begin with. So you need to really make the most out of your kit to make sure. it work. 
Well, and as, then everybody's also running a resto druid. Yeah, but as you said multiple times in the show before, you are you're mostly just targeting the priority target, right? And we currently have the Mythic Plus kind of unless I'm missing something here. You're not the meta isn't changing to something that's like suddenly reaping again, right? Because you're going from the the decree ladies, right? Uh -huh. The emissaries to the mini Nazoth bosses, which are also still a single target boss. So you're have not you have you looked much at the Awakened to Fix Bay? The Awakened to Fix? What's that? Yeah, they renamed it. They renamed it to from Corrupted to Awakened. Sure, um, we'll go, go for it. Explain. Anyways, so we actually may see a meta shift if they don't fix like a, a, a part of how the fix works. We may actually go back to a double rogue meta, mm. in which case we may not have another range slot because of the double rogue meta. Because basically you can activate multiple of the pillars at once, but you can only activate them if you're out of combat. So you'll have a rogue like pull mobs away from the pillar and like the other rogue will click the pillar and it's like on the far side of the map. So like your two rogues are like tag teaming, like walking across the map while your other three players, your tank, your healer and your other DPS are killing one pillar. And then the other guys hit a different one on the far side of the map and then go downstairs. The other rogue brings the two mini bosses together and you fight them together. So that may actually be a legitimate heck? strategy. I... My my gut reaction says, excuse me, but my like gaming side of this to like watch with this having the outside, you would know how this would affect things more than I would. That kind of seems like I mean this affix is going to just go nuts, right? And I think Blizzard yeah. wants something to be just like super nutty for the end of this it expansion. Looks so fun. It, okay, so okay. honestly it looks so fun, except for okay. that one glaring issue where you're just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do if if you, if people if the meta is actually to pull two of these pylons at once and hmm. your your best strategy is using two rogues to like pull trash packs away so you can go downstairs why don't you just uh why don't you just stealth you know yeah, yeah, yeah just go, go kitty cat and go stealth well we have bad stealth and we also mm. don't have vanish mm. oh, no. and we don't have repost or over mm. Mm. if bear form i can't tank i can't tank a mini well i guess i could trees the mini boss insta and run mm. but it's not. It's not really feasible. We've come full circle, Tettles. Triant bot. I I didn't know that was a thing. That, that, it's over. That Check. I I thought you can only do one pile on it. Like only one could be activated at a time because when you pull the boss and no. kill it, that's when you pour. That's it. the issue. Is that uh, multiple can be active at once? Okay. And once it, and once you actually hit the obelisk, they're active downstairs too. So the rogue doesn't even have to stay downstairs the whole entire the whole entire time. The one that goes downstairs could die. And then okay. your other group can just like walk over there and kill that other guy at the same time. I I'm ready for the weird compilation videos or some Twitch highlight of just someone skipping an entire dungeon somehow and then also still killing it all. It's gonna be something wacky. I mean that's that's I kind hope. of the whole point. I don't know. Uh, the new Awakened Fix looks really good though. I'm pretty okay. happy for it. Alrighty. But yeah, the double double meta comp. I'm unsure about that. Do you Bor do you push any big boy keys or just let titles do that? I just thought that'll see that. Uh, like I said, I'm just a just a raider. I love raiding. Okay. I used to push keys, but I thought that uh, I'm not a big fan of the BFA iteration of Mythic Plus. Uh, I know a lot of the Legion people. Uh, I I know I shouldn't say a lot. I don't know for sure, but a lot of the Legion people I knew didn't don't really enjoy pushing keys uh, as much in BFA. Dungeons aren't really as fun, in my opinion. I, I see it as a means to an end. I, I do them, even though the the Mythic Raider and me, I don't know if you echo this as well, Bora, but the fact that there's those new corrupted affixes on weapons for Mythic Plus that are spareable and farmable now that look, some of them are kind of busted, or like the Balefire Branch one. Granted, the amount of corruption they can roll is super high, but I don't know how you'd be able to weave, you know, weave that in early uh for uh for progression but there are some pretty crazy extra power spikes that are going to be able to be farmed if you really just no life keys at the start of the new season but i don't know if i could force myself to do that like it really <laughs> depends on how yeah. powerful it is like i yeah. forced myself to try to get like an 1800 uh, the first week even though i suck at pvp uh just to try to get the, you know a little bit of extra thing so maybe i i would i would do it like yeah. i said it really just depends on the type of reward and that's and then the the, the mythic plus thing too tattles do you still know if when you aggro the last boss of the dungeon does it aggro all of the awakened mobs yeah it does okay. uh basically the pillars are like 
in the room of the last boss of the instance they're just like sitting there yeah and as soon as the boss is pulled they summon all of the the remaining ones but they don't summon okay so like all the mobs also have like these minions that spawn with them um and they do just like various things but they don't summon the little minions Ob the little minions are actually the most deadly on one of them there's this like big blob and he has these mind flay tentacles that are with him okay and that one, the mind flay tentacles are the most dangerous part of him so i don't, I don't know that's that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Are you even sure. doing the dungeon at this point? Like, what the <laughs> heck is this affix? I mean, yeah, I like, mean, yeah. I, like, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, are we just like, did they just say like, yeah, we don't need to balance anything. We're just going to put a bunch of mini bosses in the dungeon and you can just kill those and like, screw it. You think you uh, think you were doing freehold before? You're, you're just doing this. Uh, dude, it, how much trash you actually pull? Oh, uh, well, so those mobs only give four count a piece. Okay. Um, and then you have some dungeons like Shrine of the Storm that have three, 395 count baseline um, that you have to kill. So you're only getting 16. You're use, you're utilizing the lieutenant mobs by and large to be able to move around the map openly. Um, and they actually have... Okay, so the, the, the spires don't move at all week to week. And the, the mobs that are inside of them don't change at all either. Hmm. And they have them in really good spots that allow you to skip... Do big skips fairly leniently so they they put them in spots where people were skipping so they're not being jerks about it the only Forced one that's really rogue yeah the only one that's really egregious is there's like a couple in a tall desire that are really bad but every other dungeon is like all right yeah, yeah, yeah they put the spire here we're good with this we can we can make this work you still have to get trash count though which is going to be um challenging especially if you want to do like a really big move across the map okay and then I guess, how about some open discussion about, again, more about 8.3, about what you guys have either sponged up from the Dream Grove, what the theory crafting is sort of ebbing towards, sort of encapsulating all of this, right? So corrupted gear, the new weapon, I don't know if the caster weapon for balance is like making you go, oh my goodness. So, I think it's just stats, right? It's just a lot of stats. Is it the which? Correctly. Do you know which one it is? I forget. There's so many now. I'd have to log. I can log on to the BTR real quick, but wouldn't be able to give you the answer right now. Because there is it. Is it the staff or a dagger for for you? Let's see. Balance druid. This is like a. I think it's a two-handed mace too. Isn't it's a two-handed mace. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Vaz Yakel. Yeah. Or no, one-handed mace, sorry. It's one-handed? One-handed. It's a mace. Caster mace. Okay, oh. so we can wear a one-handed mace and an offhand. Yeah. Oh, and the offhand corrupts. I looted an offhand off trash. It was corrupted, so. Had crit damage on it. Only 3%. So. Yeah, you gain the void ritual, giving your spells and abilities a chance to increase all secondary stats by 7 every second for 20 seconds. And this chance increases if the last, if at least two nearby allies also have... The void ritual but it's only i mean it's priest holy paladins rest of elemental shamans balance and restoration druids on this on this uh one-handed bonky mace that seems pretty good okay. for sure a that's a lot of, of stats i mean it doesn't look like it, it's allotted like you know how like each th each like slot is allotted a certain amount of secondaries it doesn't look like it has reduced secondaries for that like like sea breeze or no secondaries so sure it's just free stat Yo, how do you feel about Sea Breeze, Bora? Not very, not very good. <laughs> oh no. So that's that one. So I guess what do you guys have figured out? So is there anything you want to sort of like throw out there for Moonkins on the horizon or uh, any range yeah. DPS in general, but to be aware of X, Y, or Z in the next patch? Tettles, what do you got? Uh, so um, Moonkin, your Azerite from Nihilotha. All of it is very good because it all has streaking stars and you can get Arcanic Pulsar off. Um, one of the last two bosses. I don't remember if it's Carapus or Normal Nazoth. So you can get that that max item level as right. But the downside is that we don't have a weapon off one of the last two bosses. So we were at a ten item level disadvantage for our weapon damage, which is very sad. Well, you can you can either look at it that way, or you can say that you can get your weapon from heroic and have it as an item advantage going into mythic. Mm. Yeah, I, you're, you're not wrong. And with the with the amount of people that raid Mythic, I do understand that that is an issue for a very insignificant amount of the population. It's true. It's true. 
I'm still hoping that Blizzard updates the PTR and actually just makes Carapace and Azoth just drop only weapons and only trinkets and stuff and take off all the crap loot. Like, there's a ring there and a pair of pants. Like, who cares? <laughs> and those have higher eye level? Like, shouldn't the last two bosses only drop, like, the pinnacleist of rewards in the tier and the weapons are really important? The trinkets are usually important. Why is it like a pair of wrists or something? Yeah, and boss loot is kind of gone downhill for a while. I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people like stuff like classic and TVC is the end boss loot is you remember it. It's you... not really. It hasn't really been the same. I think the last thing that I was like totally hyped for was Whispers in the Dark from Gul'dan. That was a oh. long time ago. That was a really cool trinket. I miss trinkets okay. like that. That that was a very sick trinket. I actually loved it because it impacted our playstyle so heavily. Um, and then you could just like high roll some sick procs. I, I was a big fan of that trinket. I liked it. it fun. Oh, we have chat also came up with the, the Azerite off the last two bosses will not go up by plus ten. Just the other stuff. That's a good thing for sure. That's like a really good thing. Tells is a ghost. There's a ghost in your house. It's not Tells. a ghost, my cat. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a white cat. Could be a ghost. Yep. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, Bor, have you got anything else you want to make sure people are aware of that you've, you've noticed or looked at or you guys have talked about in the discords that is uh, maybe less common knowledge about 8.3? Uh, be prepared to have a system that's probably a little worse than Titan Forging. Oh, yeah. Sure. You don't like Yeah, You don't uh, like don't... the... Yeah, not a big fan of corruption. I think it's pretty bad mm. at the moment. Not saying I like Titan Forging, but I don't think anyone did either. Yeah, it, it's it's just hard. Like, I mean, I get the point of Titan Forging and stuff, but yeah, I don't think that's the correct way to go about it. If if you're out there and you haven't seen the post, wow, I just made a post of the day about actually that Blizzard removed three of like the the junk corruptions, so the Less damage taken from periodic effects. The healing is it the healing received and the uh yeah, it's healing health healing. regen. That's that's exactly what it is. Health regen. I remember. Those were removed. So it's a start, you know. It's a start, yeah. It's a start for sure. It's but then the then the the coupling with that again, like I said, is that trinkets and weapons from mythic plus now have curated corrupted effects like the the awesome two-handed sword from king's rest now like procs like a wicked amount of haste so sure okay every three warrior and arms warrior and two-handed class wants that now already, you already wanted it anyway they already wanted it yeah sure. so now they're so now they're even more upset when when their friend gets it and they still don't have it so <laughs> well you just made it you just made you just widened the yep we don't have any weapons like that from it. Well, I think we really have. We don't have like a, anything from Mythic Plus that's like, dang, that's a it's a good item there. I mean, it's just eye level. Yeah, these are removed. So X total Mecha, health regeneration. Mechagon rings though. Yeah, that's that's definitely something. If you don't know about the the if then that then true. this Mechagon rings might be pretty spicy. But these... I, dude, I hate that crit damage is still crit damage and crit healing is still yep. even a thing. They honestly should remove that too. It is just so much better than anything else. It is insane to me. Is yeah, because we have a, we have the avoidance, we have haste, mastery, crit, verse. And these were all buffed to three, five, six. We already have crit, and then we have crit damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Crit damage is just not balanced at the moment. Yeah, and I feel like you need you need the right systems for crit damage. You know, maybe maybe this maybe this game. I don't like. I wouldn't know how you could put that into you know, right, like an RPG. You know, MMO. Uh, mm -hmm. But it I, it I don't think crit damage really belongs here. To be honest, in this sort of game. Did you know that Shift was telling me about this? Apparently, for Mage, the crit damage uh, effect is worth something like sixty five item levels on gear. For fire mage, yeah, fire mage. <laughs> okay, I've heard I've heard some angry people say ninety on bracers, but I mean is... they could just be they could just be, uh, you know, exactly. Because again, yeah. the, the crit damage and healing one is two, three, four. 
And the versatility, crit, mastery, and haste secondaries are all three, five, six. And depending on, there's obviously going to be outliers of 36 specializations yeah. in the game. I would imagine that if you pluck away like four or five that have like crazy crit reliance, uh, from what I was told from a couple of people that actually do a lot of APL work, they said that a lot of it is pretty close no matter what one you get. Because it's just, yeah, it's but, just free stats, right? Essentially. But then you have outliers like Fire Mage that of, they destruction auto crit too. in combustion. Yeah, and yeah. Dest and Destro Lock and stuff like that, where mm -hmm. they're just going to get 80 item levels worth of. They would need to change things, yeah. right? Like, that's what we we're just saying. You need yeah. to change things to get crit damage into this game. If you like, it could be it could be a stat next expansion if they change classes that rely on it. Yep, farming crit damage Mechagon Bracers for Fire Mage. Oh gosh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's so unlucky too because Bracers has the lowest like stat budget value. Yeah, they do. You would wear, you would wear like the worst corrupt, or you'd wear the best corruption effect even if it's at like a huge item level. Risk better than weapon? Question mark. Yep. <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's that's just an itemization budgeting problem. I don't know why Blizzard chose that. Why doesn't every slot the same item budget? I don't understand. Some other items are just weaker than others. So when you yeah. get a socket in bracers, you, it's like 15 plus 25 or more item levels. It's like just like that. Because they're meh. I mean the socket system, again, if you don't know, sockets are farmable on anything you can put them on in the in 8.3. They do take about a month of farming the horrific visions once to almost twice a week, which is like the cap. I don't think you can even do more than two a week. Unless you're flex, maybe. But, uh... You need to get out more. Heat at that boy. <laughs> how much How much gold is he going to make off of his residuum that he can't use? I don't know. Is it going to be like one silver per residuum or something? Because I thought... Did, was, didn't flex have like a hundred thousands of this stuff? Like, I he had, just... He had like 2.5 million whenever that screenshot was released, and then... And then uh, like one character or across all of them? Ac across all of his characters. Then yeah. it was like day after, it's like blue post pops up. It's like people are, ex are reaching unexpected amounts of Titan Residuum. Thus, <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just like look at that. You're it, like, yeah, really that unexpected. That happens all the time. It happens yeah. all the time for some it reason. Does. We remember, remember the, I don't know if you remember this, but in Legion, they had the, the Moonfire spam for, for a while, a couple times. Yep. And we would go, Hey, if you make this change, people are going to be spamming Moonfire, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, it probably won't work like that." <laughs> and then the chain, they, 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 it goes out. We get the Coven, everyone spamming Moonfire, doing a shit ton of damage, and they're like, "We didn't expect players to be using Moonfire on single target and two target fights mm. as often as they are." And they always say it like that. They're like, "Ah, oh, we just didn't see it coming," but everyone, everyone tells them. Everyone always tells them. None. Yeah. I guess you say it tells them, but I mean, what we mean is we, we try to talk to them, and but we aren't sure if they're there. They're like talking through a door, but like sometimes they're upstairs sleeping. I, I, I don't know. How, I don't know how other classes communicate, but we have very limited communication with class devs for balance right now because of uh, because of Sias basically just being uh, he's just doing like real life stuff. So basically, we have mm -hmm. very limited communications with WoW class devs. Uh, so sometimes there's just like stuff that's occurring and tier 21 moonfire spam on the tier set is a good example. Also, power of the moon direct damage gets buffed by 50% right before BFA launches. BFA launches with us spamming moonfire only. Not even casting star surge, just moonfire. And you're just like, okay, this is very cool. <laughs> That didn't last that long, though, did it? I don't remember that lasting it too long. It lasted all the way until Heroic Week, where they nerfed it. Okay, so like a month. <laughs> but it's it's still it's still a whole thing. It's like, like this concept. is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Please don't let it happen. We're begging. And they're you like, no, it's not going. You know, it's not going to last all the way yeah, into the parade. Right? You sit there, you look at that, you're like, this is ridiculous. This is there's no way. And then they change, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I knew this was gonna happen. But you're like, why did we even get here? But there's been things like that that always happens. It goes back to a the famous all the enhancement shaman feedback that we gave Blizzard going into Warlords and going into Fire Nova and how it's just nonsense and how Fire Nova is ridiculous. And the more targets you have, the stronger Fire Nova is. That's how like it's like like gonna be like the linchpin of how enhancement works is if there's tons of targets, it'll do astronomical DPS. And they're like, it'll be fine. 
And then Iliayo gets to mythic, you know, Cho'Gall and High Imperator Margok. Is oh, like, God. Yep. Oh! Those ads instantly die. And it's like, so okay. And then they remove two targets from Fire Nova. Just like the next reset or something. And be like, we told you this you know half a year ago. Moon okay, so whenever they were changing Starfall in the beta, um, this is when Lunar Shrapnel was still just obscenely OP. Um, they they nerf Starfall's base kit, and they okay. don't nerf Lunar Shrapnel. Lunar Shrapnel makes it to live, where you're Starfalling like two targets, and it's worth twenty five percent of like twenty five percent damage increase per trait on AOE. Um, whenever you're hitting three or more targets with Starfall. So hmm. it is just like above and beyond the best, and then it just gets gutted into the ground, and it's never been seen since. Sixty-six percent redu reduced damage. Sixty-six <laughs> percent. That that oh man, that's been so long. I I I don't I'm not I don't, I don't like think I don't want to think like it's pretentious or something, but it, it's there are definitely people within class like every class's community that has a general enough idea that. They could definitely give Blizzard like good ideas for the class. I'm not saying it's me. I'm not saying it's Tettles. I'm not saying it's anybody, right? But but it feels like they just don't always listen. And then things go wrong. And we're sitting here just like, we told you so, you don't want to listen, but they're like, we didn't we didn't like we don't want to rely on the players to tell us. It's just kind of it's just kind of a weird mentality. Like I feel they could benefit a lot in terms of of class design, in terms of like balancing, and maybe even some class designing if they. I mean, they just don't have enough time to get all the yeah. nuance back by playing it themselves, and I don't, I don't expect them to be able to get, like put in all of ten billion hours to be able to really understand the intricacies and the ins and outs of why something is good or why something is bad for a, a spec. But but on some level, I do expect them to try to be able to communicate with people who do understand, right? It's just rough. It's just a rough spot. It definitely is. What's not a rough spot, though, is this short break we're going to take. And if you two want to step away for a moment. <laughs> All right. And uh, Hell yeah, babe. Yeah. There we go. There it is. So, Chad, if you have any questions for for Tettles or Bora, you can save them and use them right, right now. And we'll... Start coagulating in the chat. We can have a back and forth little bit of dialogue. I have some canned questions for them, of course, as this section of the show moves forward. It's about, about, the, ha about the halfway mark. We're like an hour and 20 in. It's somewhere in there. It, it, we'll figure it out. But episode 205 today, it's been a long and winding road. We have Fury Warrior on the horizon for next Sunday. Then there will be a Sunday off due to it's the Sunday before the holidays and I'll be gone and I'll be working on my new computer build. I'll be taking some time away from all of this stuff. And then the 29th, I believe, right before all the New Year's festivities, it'll be the year-end special. And if I can get it sorted, we'll see how that goes. It may be a completely non-World of Warcraft show. But more on that, of course, as we get down the road here in this month. And then... We'll get back up with more spec shows. I'll probably put another poll on Twitter. You guys could vote on the order of the next four again. And I don't know if I'm going to get through all 36. I've already said that before. I doubt it. So just keep that in mind. I've been working through all these. Obviously, casting now has become sort of an extra gig that I'm doing. So that takes away two or three weekends here and there. And it moves time away from doing the Sunday shows. But we'll get through as many as we can, because once beta starts for Shadowland, that obviously takes priority. I would imagine you would agree that doing beta coverage the way I've been doing it the past couple of expansions, and then doing beta shows intermittently, bringing on people that have been testing stuff and seeing how things are working, would be more beneficial than doing shows on 8.3, when all the discords are going to have everything out there, and we'll have some shows that sort of teeter off. But that is how... That is going to work. And I would not be sitting here doing this today for all this time if it wasn't for those that are supporting the show, the stream, and everything in between over on my Patreon page. Thank you very much to those that are over there. There is more of this show if you are interested in getting more of the podcast. There's sort of a behind-the-scenes after-show wrap-down off-script, just 30, 40, 50 minutes or so, depending on the show. We're up to almost 70 of them. There'll be one for this show as well. But they are the, the BTS after-show just a little bit more, and they all go get put up there on Patreon. They are RSS feedable, so you can feed them into your RSS feeding YouTube or, uh, I guess, podcast dissolving device. Take them with you for what we want to do there. And then there's also art 
and there's the different uh, rewards we have every holiday season. I'm filling out and writing out a whole bunch of holiday cards, uh, probably starting very soon. Click the mail those off before the holidays as that works. But those are all down there. Thank you very much to those that are doing that all this time. And additionally, shout out to the sponsors and partners that I have here on Final Boss TV. Finally, if you didn't know, the show is now officially partnered and sponsored with Corsair and Elgato. Holiday shopping's up here. If you have a better deal, of course, that's out and about on any of the bits and bobs and parts and pieces that Corsair offers, of course, please use that. But the links down below the stream or the links on YouTube, of course, go to support the stream. I mean, if you actually use the code Final Boss, I can get you free standard shipping and 10% off Corsair peripherals and any Elgato gear. So if you're looking for things for gifts or for yourself, of course, those links might be able to help you out down there. Down below, I have the huge build I keep talking about. Uh, I think the timing works out the best that I'll be live streaming the build uh, later this month. So if you want to watch me put together all the madness that I've accrued over the past year and putting it all together to go to the two PC build and sort of make a studio out of it instead of just doing it from my master bedroom here at my house, I have a own setup and that'll be very soon. But outside of that, of course, if you miss any of the live shows, if you didn't hear a couple weeks ago now, I actually hooked up the audio only podcast to Spotify now. So iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and Spotify. If you just search Final Boss TV, all one word, capital F, capital B, capital TV, should plop up right there for you. We're going to update the art for that. That's the old podcast art, actually. But now you can listen to the audio-only versions on multiple places if you'd like. Or, of course, everything and the side content included is all coagulated up on my YouTube channel. So if you missed any of the coverage from BlizzCon or you want to know where the episodes go we just had the avengers demon hunter show we got the holy paladin show on holy death knight show the post blizzcon stuff me and senpai talking about shadowlands me and mike talking about shadowlands the dev interview the pre blizzcon special with hazel and big old big dad mr gm then you can go check those out it's all on youtube everything gets playlisted by the year so the 2019 playlist is right here of course 2018 if you want to go back oh there's a picture of Tettles. Look at this guy from last year. More and more and more. There it goes. That's where everything sits. Because obviously everything goes in VOD form here, but then it only lasts for like two months. Then it goes away. So that is that. Questions, of course, you can start typing them in chat now. And we will get to them. But, uh... Tettles, you good for questions? Bor, you ready for this? You ready for chat to... Yeah. I'm ready to go. Only serious questions, chat. Only serious <laughs> questions. Oh no. Um, um, you you have just opened up a can of worms. Well, I mean, the first question I have to ask is which camp are you in, Tettles? Glyph of Stars or Moon Conform? I don't transmog. You don't transmog. I mean Me, same. I'm looking at your, your Torin right here. You look transmog to me. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Okay, never mind. I ha I transmogged for push week because we were re-rolling into bad keys and Nerf was like, all right, I know what we need to do. We need to change our transmogs. And then he was like, Tittles, you have to transmog your character. So now, now I'm transmog, I guess. Yeah, you're right. You okay. caught me. Because Bora's also, um, what the hell is this? <laughs> That's good looking. What? Okay, okay. So I was, I was hyped for classic. So I said to myself in... The spirit of classic, I'm going to be uh, wearing what I get. You know, and I haven't transmogged a single time in BFA. <sighs> I, I like to show off my accomplishments. I'm going to scroll down here, chat, so you get the full effect. It, it, it's... These, this is, this is peak. That That's is the thing. Before this before. is peak, right? This, is, I, this is as I, good as it gets. This is best in slot right there. Hmm. Okay. Laura has broken me. <laughs> Fucking dying. I mean, I'm a Glyph of Stars fan because I think the cast animations on Moonkin look abysmal. You're just big old fuzzy ogre, but whatever. I look at that regrowth cast bottom right. True. No. You're just like this the whole damn. Yeah, I couldn't rain. find. I well, was. You told me to like find no, a picture, that's... and I'm like, balance doesn't look good. You're like, you only wave your hands what? whenever you're casting Lunar Strike. 
The other times you're you're yeah you're hitting them with it. <laughs> you're hitting them with it. <laughs> it's like a it's like a kamehameha. Wait for it. Uh, you gotta let them have it. <laughs> oh no, please. Are either of you actually playing classic balance? No, no. I'm playing classic elemental shaman. Uh, slightly, it's it's pretty bad, but uh, as everyone likes to tell me, but I make. Oh, you have, I mean, you put down your totems, then you hit chain lightning, and then lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, chain lightning, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning well, bolt. Well, no, you lightning. run out of mana uh, too fast. You gotta, you can't always chain lightning unless you're I mean, running out of mana. Raid bosses in Molten Core last 40 seconds. <laughs> so, I don't yeah, know. I'm normally chain lightning a lot, but I like to let them get some threat first because I have no Vuka. threat DR. <laughs> Like uh, like mages and uh, right. rogues. Okay, let's look at chat. What we got here? What's happening here with the chat? Because I have more questions, of course. But oh yeah, here this is one that I sort of asked on other questions on uh, on past shows. Uh, well, a wood talent, if any, including past abilities or talents, would be would oh uh, would you baseline if you could? Would you bring back something from the past? Like I guess tomorrow. This is the this is the the question I guess that I. Summarize it. If you could snap your fingers and have one thing back. One weapon trait? What just one thing for Balanced Druid for Moonkin. Well, I mean it Vind asked talent specifically. Uh Euphoria. Nature's, nature's Vigil. I, I, I don't know about Euphoria. I mean Euphoria was good. It was like Nature's hmm. Vigil, Heart of the Wild, Symbiosis, probably something like that. Yeah. Uh, tranquility, you can give me tranquility baseline too. I'm down to really just. That's the I. I think Blizzard's. I, if Halinka lets the hybrids have their hybrid healing back, I don't know if we want to go back to Throne of Thunder, where a raid cooldown is okay. All the hybrids throw your healing out. <laughs> that was a I raid think that's cooldown. Fine. Yeah, and I think that allows them to design bosses that are uh, more complex because you have mm. to because you know that the players have all these tools sure and i think i think it all comes down to the fact of like the pruning right you think about they're pruning stuff because people have too many tools and there's too many people in the raid and there's two difficulties right so like like remember we're talking about like the whole like it's gonna come back to starfall but like they kind of they, they're they're kind of tuning around the moment even though they know stuff's changing Right, they know we're going into mythic, but we're gonna remove things that would be fine in a mythic setting. Does that? I don't know if that makes that, that makes sense. Like, I would say that I would say that they're pruning stuff so there's less things to tune around, but then they normalized everything in mythic rating. I think they're I think they were pruning stuff because the game was too hard, like too complicated to jump into, which I think is a. I think it's a systems issue, not a game issue. I think the game is too hard to jump into because it's gated behind a like a monthly sub and like the base game. Plus, it's very challenging to actually level, so you're reliant on class and character boosts. I think that is why the game is hard to jump into. But they assessed the issue as it's the classes are too complicated. Hmm. But so, definitely, they're they're trying to address at least that leveling barrier to entry in shadowlands though considering it's gonna you know one to ten and then you're just you pick uh, expansion and then you're in shadowlands i mean but who does it fix it for like it, it doesn't get new players into the game right new players are only playing free like younger players are only playing free to play games which is a different issue in mm -hmm. of itself yeah this one comes up i mean well this so there's a couple of questions that that Northern Man you asked a couple times. Let me see. This one though is how much of your current utility outside of battle res is sought after in raids or mythic plus? That's I mean I you said is solar flare even useful? The solar beam, solar, solar beam, probably. solar yeah. flare. It's completely I mean, dependent. It's completely dependent on the right because. Yeah. The, you know the first thing you ask in every single raid. The first thing I ask in every single raid testing is, "Let me get the. I want to get the one of the first kicks so that I can see if it's silenced." Sure. That's that's the big thing. It's an eight second silence. There's been fights where that has been broken. Mm -hmm. Zach mm -hmm. Voss comes to mind, like just right off the bat. There's definitely been other fights where you silence like a group of, uh, you know, a group of people. It all comes down to how, what they're letting affect it. Yeah, I, I can say that. I can say that balance can be the most overpowered 
spec in the game, just utility wise. Occasionally, it's just be- like druids, monks, and rogues just have just the most utility in the game by not. It's not even an insignificant amount. It is the most utility in the game by a lot. And balance with all that druid utility, they have like entanglements. They have typhoon. They have solar beam. They have uh, trees. They have infinite survivability with off healing and bear form. They have all of the tools that can make uh, the spec work. But people are very narrow-minded and sometimes will pick stuff purely based off damage. And it's hard to explain sometimes why things are good in a way that's not, this does the most damage. I've been doing a lot of PvP lately, RBGs, Arena, and Battlegrounds to get caught up on a couple of things and working on Conflict and Strife in particular. And I can tell you that Root Beam is infuriatingly powerful. Yes, it is. Oh, if you are not able to get dispelled out of from someone else outside of the beam, it is probably the biggest lockdown in the game. It isn't a stun. It is huge. They got you got a I mean you can get the 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 trap thing is always really annoying for me. The uh the survival hunter trap like uh, survival trap is pretty onto good. you. Yeah, or poop. So it's a seven seconds. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you, I've tried to like shift and sometimes, but you don't want to get locked down. It's really mm-hmm. fast. So and I, I, it's a good, I mean, Tettles, you've probably spoken about that point to your blue in the face and you try to yeah. have that as a prevailing wind discussion in the community that you really shouldn't just, oh, do, who does more damage? Right. I think a lot of people get blinded by damage numbers because, yeah, they, it, it comes into niche situations, which is why it's, it's like the shaman argument, right? Tremor Totem actually got to work a couple times in this expansion, and it might mm-hmm. actually work a couple more times in Nihilotha, but only in Normal and Heroic and not in Mythic, which still goes to like, but like, but why? Because and balance utility is weird too, because in same with Tremor Totem is that it's so nuanced that it's you want to play around it to make it good. Sure, it's good, it's good, it, yeah, yeah. And if it's good, it's good. Very rarely is it good in raid. Very frequently is it good in Mythic Plus though, because but when it is, when it is good in raid, it's like mandatory. Mass like mass root, like, root, like, like be, roots and stuff like. Yeah, mass and tangle can be the singular like the singular most overpowered ability, and it very Auto frequently raid, is. Yeah. It innervate is also wild for raid. Oh, it's huge! It's yeah. a raid cooldown. I think I mean Dispriest with Innervate is a raid cooldown. I think by itself almost. Yeah, they they double power word radiance during the Innervate window and they they hit their ramp there and it's insane amounts of field. Yep. Yep. I mean I'm I, I it's a kind of a, another hot take. Sparty in chat. Wow feels mild right now. Blizzard needs to add more spice. I think that's the whole point of what Halinka wants. He wants to bring back those niche extra things, not just like you know, Paladins get auras. Uh, he wants, I think there's more to it, right? He wants things that come up that have those extra decision points yeah. to be more of part of the fluidity of the classes and the specs in the game. And more so, I guess, the, the classes, right? I feel, like, I feel like the systems in the game were just what kind of sucked for BFA. I feel like Island Expeditions yeah. and Warfronts were such a flop that yeah. they made the whole entire expansion bad. Like, if they did... if they Azerite was the big one, though. I mean, okay, so yeah, if they... If they like completely removed island expeditions and warfronts and fixed Azerite and like gave people stuff to do in Mythic Plus, then it would be way better. Hmm. Like if they if they gave you like a leaderboard in Mythic Plus and like real reasons to actually play the game, it would it would have given you infinitely more content that you have currently. Because right now warfronts and islands are wasted development time. You know, uh when people when people talk about the Shadowlands, like uh like you know, like features trailer. Yeah. And like, man, it was really short. And I'm like, that's that's fine, right? Yeah. Like that's fine to me because it didn't say island expeditions, didn't say <laughs> artifact knowledge, well... it didn't say war fronts, it didn't say all these things that we assume were gonna be bad immediately. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> that was yeah, that was it. I'm scared, I'm scared that Torgast is just islands that go vertical. Dude, that's what I said too. I I am really worried that that shit's gonna be bad again. I hope not. I hope they just take what they learned from islands and what they've learned from even like the AI from the island AI players and even like the comp stomp brawls to make it so that even just like the boss NPCs don't just like stand there and like cast something and you turret them down and they die and you move on to the next floor. 
right? I hope, hopefully they've made it because that's infinite content as well. If it infinitely scales, and I even threw this out to like some of the method boys at BlizzCon, I was like, "Do you ever think I throw this to JB specifically?" I said, "You have Mythic Plus in that realm, but could you imagine like Torghast runs where it's like three man Torghast? Like, how far can you get in thirty minutes?" Or solo Torghast, com you know, community-based runs. They, they can make their own leaderboards from those systems if Torghast is fun. I, so, I think it's so hard to make stuff like that fun, especially whenever you have games like Diablo. Mm. Like, well, that's, that's what true. Diablo is, right? It's like a rift. Like, or well, you, isn't it, it? You bring up like, Diablo. I didn't want to like. Have you seen the potential? leaked or or photoshop we don't know um the diablo 4 gearing system is almost almost part and parcel to what corrupted gear is in wow and 8.3 yeah <laughs> it's like the same thing so <laughs> Dude, it, it, the corrupted gearing system is worse than titan forging i don't understand how this has gone like it, it's going to hit the patch i don't know like who they ran this by, and they're like, yeah, dude, that you have just introduced a new system and hmm. you've blown my mind. I don't understand how you I hope come not. up with the greatest system of all time. Thank you. And then it's just like, what? I, I, to, I, think, I think they're too focused on making stuff new as opposed to mm -hmm. trying to understand why people like stuff. Shout out to this beautiful man in chat named uh, Super Tease, by the way. He's been hanging out for a little bit. I think they purposely didn't give a leaderboard to Mythic Plus because they think a ladder is intimidating and would lower participation. Then, I mean, maybe, but I my first hot tick on this before Tettles weighs in, I'm sure. Why are there three plus million characters scanned on Raider IO then that make a leaderboard? Yeah. Okay, so so not not only that, but Part of the issue, too, is the only legitimate in-game for Mythic Plus right now is MDI or Raider.io score. Mm. So it's basically just MDI, right? Because Raider.io score is not, like, a legitimate thing. I don't, I don't know why they didn't make a leaderboard. It is pretty... It, maybe Sid's right, and maybe it would just completely kill participation. Mm. Um, but, but I think the leaderboard is only... I don't think like it would change anything. It's just a celebration of the top-end players, right? And it's, a, it's an incentivization... Of legitimizing Mythic Plus in game, um, it's, it's why I think that Mythic Plus PvP and raid gearing should be separate from one another, because they're all impossible to balance. Because loot is loot. You, you, yeah, you're, you're preaching to the choir on that one. I mean, yeah. I Mike's idea he threw out months, if not years ago, about how the different aspects of the game should have their own loot pools makes the most sense to me. I mean, PvP kind of has it, but like PvP vendor when like. Honestly, just, just, just Blizzard, PvP vendor, stop. And then raids have obviously raid gear, and then dungeons should have dungeon gear. Yeah, it should be separated. I 100% agree. You're absolutely right. And Mike is spot on with that too. It should all be separated, and you should not feel forced to do content that you don't want to do. If Correct. you don't want to do, if you don't want to do a weekly cash from Mythic Plus, you should not have to. Same right. with PvP. I should not have to get 2100 the first week. Uh, for increased chance of Azerite. I don't really know. And then, yeah, I, I see the come up in chat about Blizzard doesn't want to fracture their community even more, though. But that's not fracturing. You gotta look at, you can look at it as fracturing. I look at it as you get to embrace the activities you want to do and you're rewarded for them. Right it's, now... It's right. already pretty fractured, though, is it not? Like, I feel like a lot... Like You don't have yeah. a lot of, what, trills? You don't have a lot of triple threats in the world. <laughs> It's, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Look but at this guy. I'm just trying to say, like, I mean, there's a lot of people that just want to do Mythic Plus. That's they do. Fine. And then there's a lot of people that just want to raid, like me. And there's a lot of people that uh, mm -hmm. just want to PvP. And there's some people that are really good at all three. And then they're really yeah. good at two. But it, I don't think the fact that everything kind of affects each other is fine to a certain degree. But then you have the people that only do one thing getting upset that they don't have all the stuff. Uh all the time but you could also do something like i mean they made gear almost not matter in pvp that would uh, you could do that because it's yeah. infinite scaling content is that a is that a solution uh, i don't know probably not super it, it, tease please hard. again i i just don't i just don't want people to feel forced to do content that they don't want to do i think that's just like the crux of the issue i don't want to watch 
PVPers have to just kill themselves to try to get like raid weapons or diamond lace refracting prisms or edicts Ugh. or lingering spore pods or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, al although it's it's awkward because it's hard to balance off pieces like weapons and trinkets like that. But th there is a world where you could just make it to where that all the gear is the same. And I think with like corrupt, I think corrupted effects are not not the way to do that. But it's gonna get it's gonna be a little wild west. We're not gonna feel it for like the first month. Like January and February, the first little bit of time when 8.3 comes out, we're not going to feel it. It's going to be after the world first race concludes because method limit, they're not going to feel this gear barely. They might get like some crazy good picks pieces here and there, but it'll be it'll be the guilds that are like down the road that have an aggregate more content farmed that'll feel the 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 effects of the the disproportionate stuff and take snapshots of Warcraft logs right now about where like <laughs> where where numbers are for certain classes and specs because stuff's about to get nutty because if you're that one warlock out there that gets plus four percent more critical strike damage you're a white whale and all of a sudden you gained like 40,000 DPS over your your colleagues okay I guess sure and you just jump half an expansion ahead of them it's you know, it's, you know what's hilarious to me? Yeah, Scaling is so out of control, expansion to expansion, and like oh, tier to tier. It's funny. Relative to our health. At, um, and people started getting people are getting like one shot in Mythic Plus again. It's it's not as egregious as the end of Legion, but it's getting pretty bad right now. Like what you're getting, people you're or, or tanks? Just players? Uh, no, uh, yeah, DPS players. and healers, not tanks. Yeah. Tanks. Because they scale tank survivability with essences, but they don't scale DPS HP the same rate that they scale uh, damage. Damage has increased like three to four times since the very beginning of the expansion, whereas health has only doubled. Hmm. So you're getting like one shot by stuff again. It's awful. Oh, and it's, it's super teased. Uh, yeah, thinking about the world first raiders, multi boxing 10 druids, and then taking whichever one randomly gets the best gear to race the raid. Is mind boggling, but see, I, I maybe Tettles agrees with me on this one since we've done the race toward first a number of times now. Um, with one more on the horizon, we don't know what, what's going on with that one, obviously, because we don't know when the patches are coming out. But you, you can't even, I know it trickles down, and I've said it trickles down before too. But really, those top six, seven, eight guilds in the world, maybe like maybe 10 now with the Asian scene really stepping up. You can't look at those players and what they're doing. They've chosen that, and they're going to do the madness nonsense. Because there's some degenerate crap that we've heard about for next expansion. If they don't change the covenant system, they're going to roll four of the same character for one in each covenant. And then swap characters based on which covenants provide the better benefits for different encounters. Dude, they make this game miserable for players like us. Holy moly. I'm, now that I'm like I mean, really that thinking about it. I mean, that affect... I'm not going to do that. But still. It doesn't affect us directly, but it does affect us. You, you like, you know, the like how, side of it. yeah, you know how it does because mm -hmm. we are rating at a level where people will look at stuff like that and they feel like if you're not doing that, then you're not really putting in the effort, and you're just like, in this game, I know, yeah, the people are so min max conscious to a point where it doesn't matter. But if you're not putting in that effort, then people see you as lesser and I'm just like, man, it does not matter, please. It's like people asking me what the best race is and why I'm High Mountain Torin. And I'm just like, dude, it is 50 DPS. I am not race changing off High Mountain Torin. Because High Mountain Torin slaps. Bull Rush is the best. It's really good. But I mean, you can say that and until we're blue in the face. But I think that there is... Blizzard still has recognized that though because surprisingly... Eternal Palace was quite tuned for some nonsensical stuff and and this level of farm. So they've, they've gotten that, wise to it. Hmm. How, do, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about them making bosses and uh, instances super hard in the beginning and then slapping down nerfs over and over again? It's it's always interesting to me that they actually have that they actually continue to do that. Yeah. Because whenever you think about what Blizzard sh like would. If you if you had to ask me independently of this, if if I had to guess if Blizzard would just tune something for the mass populace to where they don't have to nerf it at all, hmm. or if they or if they were going to slap down hotfix nerfs on raid encounters, I would guess that they were just going to tune it. 
to where everybody can kill the boss like super quickly and they just don't care because they balance this game so infrequently except for hot fixing raid it's very weird because i think it's it's a two-pronged problem if it's too easy then that sort of like media bubble will float out on the internet like world of warcraft's new raid super easy cleared in three days because it's happened before like emerald nightmare okay. where people were like whoa I think they like the fact like that two week huge hit of buzz and obviously they embrace the community run race to world first now because hundreds of thousands of people watch that aggregate over the course of the two week period. So they want they want it to last. Yeah, they want it to last long enough. But then like the player in me that isn't some like caster analyst whatever also says that and I've said this since Warlords. I think Zul Harak was was the the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were, for this analogy. Is that at the time I felt, and it's only gotten worse in some ways, is that mythic raids are just like obscenely difficult for, eh, like four yeah. percent or less of the game's population sees more than half of a mythic raid. Yeah. And it just seems like all that dev time and that number crunching in that time obviously appeases to a certain audience. But it just, I don't know. I just it's always a staple, thought. It's, though. It's, yeah, it's a staple it? of the game. Is it's, it? I was actually talking to somebody about this earlier, and they believe that it's precedent, that, that the, mm. they already set the precedent for it, is why they're doing it. But in the same vein, because this, this actually, the conversation came up because I was like, why don't they balance classes as frequently as they hot fix the raid? It doesn't make any sense to me. Because I, I honestly think that they should hit class tuning like once a month. Once a month. Uh, that uh, would create... I believe that would probably create a bit of a power creep. Well, I don't think that's would, that good. That would be tough. But frequent tuning, especially because it can affect your prog anytime. Like, everyone's... Like we said, only half the people get to it, but there are definitely people at other levels, and you're just, like, buffing and nerfing classes, maybe even buffing and nerfing strategies. And But yeah. it's better than... It's better than buffing and nerfing bosses already. Mm -hmm. And then but that's static, then hitting. right? Mm. That well, doesn't change your comp. It? That they doesn't change... change anything, really, for the most part. Man, it generally, it generally, it generally makes it so that nothing needs to change. Like, do you remember they, they... Mithrax? Dude, they have gutted the fights thing? like mid patch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Unot. Just yeah, they Unot. gut kill Jaden. They gut fights like literally mid patch. Yeah, Man, they Unot but was mid probably... patch. There's a different. We are taking once a month, like mid patch. Like we're talking, we're talking like an Unot month, like a month mm -hmm. after uh, like a huge Unot nerf like like a month after it, it first gets killed like that's that's mm -hmm. okay i mean it was a bit much i believe it was a bit much for Unot for an emboss but something like mithrax where cahoon has been dead for like two months now we're just gonna like change it we're gonna we're gonna make it so that you don't want to make melee it doesn't really change anything like yeah it just mm -hmm. it just means it 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 it's like it's like a belt, right? Like it, it just loosens the belt rather than putting more into the into the content. But if you're changing, if you're changing the classes, you're changing what the classes do. I believe that would affect things a lot more than just changing changing a boss, especially when the the nerfs are intended to loosen the restrictions that are already on a boss. But once every six months doesn't feel feel okay okay but but once a month is is definitely not okay like you're we're mm. talking you know those are those are very those would be very knee-jerk changes well i don't um, want you to rework a spec I, i'm just saying that they need to be or even like adding and subtracting abilities they need to be like hot fit it, it's these are hot fix changes these aren't like uh we're gonna go in and just like completely rework mostly... the core system. i think it's the mostly some numericals but again even this small discussion here based off of some chat interaction we're gonna pull it back to moonkin stuff here in a moment oh gotcha. yeah we're getting out of the weeds here Hold no, on. no it's it's fine i i like i like part of this because it, i mean it came from chat discussion and i like to wiggle that in but this to keep on the fearing crafting discussion do both of you i know tettles has one we'll go to tettles first with this one do you you have a favorite weird theory crafting fact about moonkin Biceps proposed this in my Discord. Uh, Tettles is about not Moonkin specifically, but in his case, it is Moonkin specific. <laughs> Shout out to Gatezilla for this one. He, he was the one who uh, did the research on this one. On balanced druid, 
you can melee an explosive orb, and it does more damage than using Moonfire or Sunfire on it. But you, I guess you can't. I, you can't use Moonfire, or uh, you can't use like casted abilities while you're meleeing. So it's not exactly the most practical thing, but it does more damage than Moonfire and Sunfire to explosives. Hmm. So you're telling me is that when I do keys with explosives now, I'm going to expect my <laughs> casters to walk up and bonk the explosives. Yeah. Yes. As a moon kid, you're expected to walk into melee and, and clock down the explosives, especially with your five yard additional range that you get from balance. I mean, they, you could bonk things from 10 yards away. Not even in melee, technically, because I can only be True. five yards away. Just saying. Sounds pretty good to me. Bora, do you have one? I I honestly got nothing. I've I've been upstaged by that one. <laughs> I, I don't have anything <laughs> like that. Well, how about this one then, Bora? What is your favorite Legion artifact appearance of choice for the Scythe of the Loon? Uh Lunar Call, probably. Lunar Call. Lunar Call is probably my favorite. Uh, is that the little crescent one? That's the crescent or... moon, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's the crescent moon. Yep. Do you have a favorite color? I think it comes in blue, right? Yes, it does. I like the blue one. It's real good. Tettles, do you have a favorite? I think you're transmog to one right now, even. I think I have the, the blue mana scythe, yeah. Yep. This is the mage tower, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's pretty All wicked. the scythe of balloons look really cool. I actually really liked them. I, I know some people it's just, were it just, it sad. Just, it, it almost kind of feels out of place on, on Moonkin model, because Moonkin model is so kind of outdated. You know what it doesn't look out of place on? Glyph of Stars. Shut oh, up, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great on Glyph of Stars. There was, there was a time when you couldn't use your flap utility while using Glyph of Stars. So. I, dude, I remember that. That was oh, unique no. in one, because it was from a glyph. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's that's the last question I had on Raidish, here. Yeah. How often do you actually use flap in raids? Uh, depends on the boss. Like I used it, I used to, I would use it on Mecha Torque sometimes. Uh, yeah, you could. Yep, it was good on Mecha Torque. That's right. Yeah, it saves yeah, I you. Use it on Mecha Torque. Um, any fight that like knocks you up, like use it on um Avatar mm -hmm. for sure. Oh uh, yeah, you did. Interesting. <laughs> or you charge, or you bear charge the boss. Uh, no, you flap. Yeah, it, it's just it's just kind of like a uh, you just do it really really quick. Um, Wait, other than that, I just use it to get places. You know, if I'm at the top of a stair, I use it to get to the bottom. Really, you hit fast. it with a wild so charge, really and you get the yeah. you get the momentum, and you're flying. Yes, what's what's this flap strat that Hippo had for Zakul? I'm reading in chat. What? I have no idea. What are you gonna? What are you gonna do on Zakul with Flap? Uh, besides, just wait for the boss to pull. Uh, no, you're I gonna mean, stand maybe, AFK maybe in phase one. AFK for the first ninety seconds of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been it. He must have been AFK <laughs> because that boss was so bad. Well, Zakul. I thought that boss was good for everything other than stop DPS. Other than like, I mean, but it makes sense. Like the timing, like it's good well, to time it out. It just sucks that just... we were out of it. Yeah, global fight timers are just bad. Well, there was, yeah. but here's the thing. There's probably another time period, right? Like maybe instead of 90 seconds, 70 seconds that like, uh, that, that, that push would have been viable. Right. But, but you just couldn't make it with the gear, but you could, but you, which means you missed the one threshold. So you have to take the other. And that was just good for Prague. So if we just do more damage next time, titles, come on. Do you well, it, people do these days. Shit. They just they just burn the boss, and they're just like, yeah, the, there's the, no holy the Zerg here. strat, and I'm just like, all right, mm. well, I'm as worthless oh. as Goosey Druid. I don't know what you want me to say, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do, you, do you, Bor? Do you want to respond to the uh, the spam that's been coming up in chat? Jasnix uh, just the posted. Raid leader? Yeah, okay. it's been happening uh, a bunch. I don't know if you wanted to. It, it, yeah, it's, that's fine. <laughs> um. Moonkin's not super complicated as like a spec. It's pretty like we said. So you're always trying to do the same thing. You kind of get into the rhythm of it. Yeah. Uh, myself personally, not a good uh, 
play and talk kind of guy, but uh, did it because I, I had, I felt I, I had. To. Um, I, th I think that's about it. Like, it, it, there's there are specs that are super complicated to play. Sometimes, like Shadow Priest, and we had one of our Shadow Priests do like all the Queen's Court calls, and I'm sitting there like, holy shit! Like, what the, what the, what is he doing? That's insane. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of stuff sticks with me, but I don't think it's super hard to do it on Balancer. I think it's probably the easiest way to do it on his tank, unless you're. And there's there's they, they changed the cameras in Legion so that you wouldn't have these bosses and you wouldn't have like you know, you're sitting in the bosses nuts, right? Like that was always the complaint. Yeah. And it's not as bad anymore. Okay. We have a little bit more time left for that one though. But uh, we'll end with a, a lore question for Tettles. What? <laughs> well, a scythe of a loon. Scythes are in some way always usually connected to death. What if the scythe of a loon is tied to Shadowlands and you've been a little MacGuffin all this time? I don't even know what a MacGuffin is. <laughs> can, you define, can you define that word for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a two-pronged question. I was told to ask you about lore in this game. Uh, who's Malfurion well, Stormrage? Tettles has no idea. It's who's, pointless. I who's Mal? Uh, he's some guy in Heroes of the Storm, isn't he? Yeah, just don't worry about it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 do some old, I do some of the lore stuff sometimes, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm worthless, dude. They will hit me stuff in, like, the Balance Theory Crafting channel, then I'll get, like, hard flamed because I don't know what's going on by boring guilty. What? I never flame. Oh, okay, never, fl never, flame. never flames. This never guy flame. plays Druid? Exactly, see? Oh, no. It's a shame. <sighs> uh, dude, I... What, again, was, I what was Illidan training to be before he uh, went rogue? To a, a black belt in karate. An MMA fighter. It's unfortunate. You know, either of those are. Elden <laughs> was a mage. Is that true? I don't. Know. He was a mage. No. Yes, he was. He a was mage. a mage. Night but he wanted Night to be a mage. druid. Yep. But scenario. See, like, chat's got no. my back. I, they know that I'm absolutely worthless for this. <laughs> well, then, uh, how about let's end the show on a good note for you, then, Tettles, because we just kind of you know put you on the spot there a little bit. Do you have a few bits of wisdom or anything you'd like to? Give shout outs to rant about moratoriums on last little bit of the show. This is for you. Take it. Uh hey, thank you for having me on, Adam K, aka Bay. I really appreciated it. There it um, is. beyond that, you can catch me. We're doing Titan Forge podcast every week. Most of the time it's focused on Mythic Plus. I do it with Dratnos Trail and myself. Most of the time it's focused on Mythic Plus. A lot of the times it's focused on PvE content generally. So we'll kind of hit whatever. Recently we've been talking about um, our most recent episode was actually on dungeon trash pulls and how you navigate some of them. We've been doing stuff on bosses and all that. I think mm -hmm. we're like 30 episodes deep now, so that's been pretty cool. So nice. you can go check that out. Um, beyond that, yeah, looking forward to Race to World First stuff. Hope I get invited back. Fingers crossed on that. And yeah, cool. Thanks for having me, Bay. I appreciate it. Absolutely, sir. Bor, how about you? Wonders Bits of Wisdom, Moratoriums, Closing Shoutouts. What you got? Yeah, I hope I also get invited back to the race of the world first. I couldn't be there last time. But <laughs> uh, I hope they send me the inv can DM me on a uh, Discord. Okay. Got to you got to throw it out there, man. You got to take your shot. Yeah, so, I respect the shit out of that. Miss Hunter, you miss one. Yeah, you miss Hunter for the shots you don't take. So yeah, yeah. thanks for thanks for having me on the show. Um, shout out to uh, to my club and the Bleachers. And uh, I don't know. Oh, that's about it for me. So no, no balanced druid moratorium. Something you want to tell uh, your Discord to stop doing or stop asking? Stop asking about canceling Star Lord. Stop dude. asking. Stop asking. Stop asking. Anyone got tips? I'm new to balance. Just uh, just hit up. Uh, just hit up one of the guides. You know, icy veins, wildhead. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure a lot of people watching here is definitely already already does that. They're not newer to balanced druid, I'd imagine. Sure. All right. So don't don't cancel what again? Star, Star Lord. Lord. Yeah, it's it, mm. 
And so kinda... previously, it was worth like 30 DPS. It was an insignificant amount. I guess we're going to we're not here. We're not brains, right? It like, was, they tell it was... us, they say, put it in the guide, and we put it in the guide. And a week later, they're like, why'd you put that in the guide? I'm like, well, you told us to. And he says, <laughs> like, that's like an increase. And like, I made a whole section on it. I asked you to like proofread to make sure it was right. <sighs> like, yeah, that's not like, it's actually not worth it. I'm like, well, it's, okay. okay, sure, but we'll take be... it out. But then it's been asked about like every it's, it's all the time since we, got we opened Pandora's box. box. It was yeah. like tens of DPS. It was tens of DPS, and now we have opened Pandora's box where we get asked daily about Star Lord canceling. It's a lot of damage. The, I mean, the, the brains lied to us. Oh no. All right, hit this button, gentlemen. We're at like two hours here. That was solid stuff. Thank you for tuning in today, episode number 205 of Final Boss TV, the Balance Druid Moonkid Thunder Turkey Boom Chicken Show. Whew, we made it. Um, but when you log in today, Starfall will still be bad, unfortunately. But around the corner again, there's Bora, Bora Bank. Chat was giving you the Bora Bank wall. It's pretty great. Go find him over on Twitch at the same name. How often do you stream, sir? Are you streaming uh, just, just great stuff? I, I normally stream prog. Oh, I yeah. generally just stream prog, and uh, sometimes I stream PTR testing, but uh, yeah. I just try to stream prog and give people different. Sounds good to me. Yeah, go check them out. And uh, what kind of ults are you going to be rolling in uh, the AV leveling right now? Oh, I'm not doing that. I already boosted a priest with oh. my thing, and I suck at it. <laughs> so I got to figure out how to not suck at it, and then I'll then I can maybe think about something else. Well, there you go. And there's the man, the myth, the legend, the triple threat himself. There's Tettles over at... I, you know, I, I'm going to make sure that chat picked up on this. His druid's name is TTV Tettles. And he's at twitch.tv okay. forward slash Tettles. Yeah, okay. So, David Q yoinked my name whenever I transferred to Zul... Actually, no, he didn't yoink it. He had my name whenever I transferred to Zul Jen, <laughs> And I couldn't name my character that. So, now I'm TTV Tettles. I currently have the name Tettles. I'm just waiting... Uh, to change it back eventually. But I've been lazy and I haven't felt the desire to. So we're still TTV titles. It's I saw that at one of the race world first over your shoulder and I was like, really? Really? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good character name, isn't really? it? Really? I don't yeah, it's should be triple threat titles. Woo! I mean I have my rogue, YT titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. All right, but I appreciate the time today. Maybe we'll go back to Race to World first and do some of that casting stuff again sometime soon. Shit, we'll see how it goes. Fun. But all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. And Karis, if you, if you missed any shows, it's all archived over on YouTube. It's Final Boss Wow on YouTube. Links down and below. Links on Twitter, Facebook, social medias, whatever have you. Go check it out there if you need the archive or any of the side content. That's where it all goes. Next week is Fury Warrior, then week off because of the holidays, and then year-end special. Stay tuned for those. Of course, I'll live stream the huge new studio build, PC build to PC madness, if you want to change you for that. But that's it. Um, get ready for Corrupted Gear, and uh, don't save your residuum, and go back and roll on old trinkets to see if they Titan Forge up to the cap, because that's going away soon. <sighs> All right, everybody. See y'all next week. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Tettles wave. Bora can't wave. Hey, no, gee. Oh, my God. Don't. Goodbye. <laughs>